All right, it's the final ship cast of the year. We're going to be talking the Chiefs upset. We're going to be talking through the final playoff game before the Super Bowl. Pete, not here just yet. He'll be joining us about half an hour. Let's go. It's the ship cast. Pat Fryer Helmo. <laughs> This is why I'm hot. Anita Han- Hanjob. Fix your sight. Jamar. <laughs> Alpha play chase. <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding me? Darius <laughs> Tony? You can't handle the heat. He it looks like we're finally at this point. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Gretch, how's it going? It's good. I'm smashing the end of a protein bar. That <laughs> you were like, we don't have to go live right at times since you're trying to eat this protein bar. And I was like, yeah, I'll be good. And then I wasn't good. <laughs> what? Uh, so, man, the, the Ravens loss was was pretty brutal for a lot of our playoff stuff, um, including a little – I don't know if you guys are familiar with the NFFC playoff contest, but including in that <laughs> – in that one there Which, yeah we had some people asking after the video and everything what we needed to happen we needed a baltimore san francisco super bowl that was what we were kind of playing the whole way the kelsey part of our of our play worked out really great it was this really great pivot he had another great game baltimore could have pulled that out we would have really been in in strong shape if san francisco also yeah. won instead we are pretty much dead because that's the way it works. Good with the multipliers and everything. Yeah. yeah. We don't have Mahomes. People will have Mahomes on a 4X multiplier. So if he gets 25 points in the Super Bowl, they'll get 100 yeah. points for that. And they'll they'll gain – I mean, we can throw them into our lineup on a one on a one multiplier, but they'll gain 75 points on us next week. So that won't be fun. No, it's not. Um, yeah, it's an interesting contest because you kind of have to figure out what the Super Bowl is and what multipliers you want in the Super Bowl and then play it back from that point. And, right. Uh, yeah, obviously you don't you don't want a bunch of one X Chiefs. It's if if it's a Chiefs Super Bowl, but um, I have some stuff that's live in the gauntlet, uh, maybe in the big mitten over on Underdog. Um, got through, or I we'll see. I might not get through either of those teams, but they're both live to get through. So I'm I'm rooting for McCaffrey and some quiet Gibbs in this game for for that. Um, nice. Also, quiet Kittle would would be helpful too. Uh, Leone's yeah, been doing it. Leon has been tracking our FFPC pro fo- uh, portfolio. Um, we had our, our sort of our last leverage point on some of the other top teams because Josh Allen does look like he might be the optimal QB in that format now in only two games. Our last leverage point was Zay Flowers versus some Justin Tucker teams on the Ravens if the Chiefs were to get to the Super Bowl because Kelsey's been so massive and tight end premium that he's probably going to be optimal. You could have like Kelsey McCaffrey – and Allen and two gamer because none of Allen's teammates did anything. And so we have some teams that are built that way. Unfortunately, Zay Flowers didn't get enough for us to really climb. We have the potential if he scores that TD where he found the potential to have two teams in the top 10. They're both in the top 20 still, but they, they can't really differentiate any further from here. They're Kelsey, CMC, Amon Ra in both cases. But we have a couple that were rooting for CMC, Amon Ra, and Kelsey to finish off strong and hopefully stay in the top 25 or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have our pick'em here, which I'll pull up uh, for this game. Kind of playing it a little bit. I wouldn't say a shootout. I would think it's sort of like uh, we're sort of playing it as like Lions trail and play like a trailing team, if that makes sense. Um, let me get that set up. Yeah, we played – our core was a Purdy Ayuk stack over, like, really attacking that the Lions are not very good in the deep part of the field. You were pushing that a little bit in some of our conversations earlier. Some of your you, – you said you don't have the walkthrough updated, but a lot of your stuff has shown, like, the the Lions defense is weak where the where Ayuk attack. I want to say the deep middle, right? I mean, you write a lot yeah, of yeah, – they're, they're, they're very vulnerable in the deep middle of the field. That I use stacks there passes plays at a high at high yeah that's I that's where I use eats um, yeah but that's also where Kittle does a lot of his damage so it'll be an interesting uh, interesting way for the 49ers to attack you know how how healthy is Debo but even if Debo's fully healthy this is still I think it still sets up as an IU game 
part of it is like how much are they going to push Purdy? I do think they're going to want to get him going before the Super Bowl, basically. Like, not to say that you can treat the NFC Championship like a a building block game, but he was awful last week. I, I mean, part of it, I was playing back and forth. It's like, could, could the game plan sort of be covering up Purdy and and looking at a lot of yak and a lot of short passes? We know Shanahan's done that, you know. I mean, yep. he could be run heavy and a lot of short stuff. Does the deep middle – are those the deep middle pass attempts even there? We're certainly playing it like it is with the, the Purdy IUK, and then we're playing golf on the way back on passing attempts. They had five this losses. Is this is our core entry. They had five losses this year. Goff and the Lions. Goff never threw fewer than 34 passes in a loss. Uh, you you brought up a great note that Rebar had uh, that that Dan Campbell is you know very aware of like the line and gets more aggressive when he's down like a seven point underdog. He's going to be more aggressive probably. That was, that was just from listening to Rich Rebar. I, yeah, I'm, that, I'm, I'm a I'm a consumer right now. I'm just I'm just listening yeah. to the pods I like. <laughs> That totally jives with my um, – I, I mentioned sort of sort of jives with my, like, gut feel from just watching them that when they're when they're underdogs like this, they're going to come out throwing, it feels like. So we, we like the passing attempts on the way back here because they might even throw a little in the first half. They threw 43 times last week in a game that they were favored at home and won. Um, so I really like this core. I mean, obviously you get the, the correlation element with Purdy and Ayuk, and there's a little bit of a dock on the payout as a result, but the bring back with Goff, I think also correlates in a way that is pretty sharp and, and is going to be a solid payoff, even at the, the reduced. The 49ers, the 49ers were a massive pass funnel all season as well. And so I think that's another, I like the attempts. You floated the attempts here. This was my least, I, I didn't contribute a ton on this uh, slip. I was out and about this morning. Um, but great. as soon as you floated this attempts number on Goff, I was like, oh, I love that. Because it, it's just like you get the pass funnel element, the way we're playing the game, and then you get Dan Campbell playing aggressively, which I think he will. Um, we have two five legs right here. So the first, Michael Badgley and Christian McCaffrey over fantasy points. This one is a little bit counterintuitive because we, we're taking the lower on Badgley's kicking points. So it's like, we're kind of playing it like a shootout, but we're really saying like, so Lions are going for a bunch of uh, two point conversions. They're going for a fourth downs. So they're not getting them all the time. Right. It's Campbell's aggressiveness on fourth downs and on two point conversions, and it's and with McCaffrey's you know over or higher on the fantasy points. You're talking about a game here where you're saying the the Niners are really firing offensively. The Lions are trailing, and I think you know. This is sketchy because Badgley's kicking points is only 5.5. They make two field goals in the first half. It's done. But um, he could get to five. That's why you don't put it on the floor. Third. That's why yeah. <laughs> you don't put he it gets, on the floor. He could get to five kicking points in the third quarter with a field goal and two TDs. So say they have 17 points in the third at some point in the third quarter. And pr I think pretty easily if you're looking at the rest of this slip and you're saying Purdy goes over, Ayuk goes over, McCaffrey goes over, Goff's going over on attempts – pretty easily not get another kicking point the rest the final quarter and a half because they are going for two on every touchdown and they are going for it on every questionable fourth down. And yeah. they're really pressing. That's the way the Lions will play at that point. That's the way they do play. And then this one, uh, we took – we got the McCaffrey Spice on here. This is one I think I showed originally. And then we have Juwan Jennings, um, which is – this is sort of the, the Debo's not as healthy as they're letting on – play because you get Juwan Jennings out there a little bit more and they run it through McCaffrey. Uh right. So yeah, I mean it's a receiving touchdown as well. Debo seems really healthy, but like it all I mean if his routes are a little bit limited and and the Lions defense is not very good in the deep middle and all of those concerns, you know, you could see a few plays for Jennings. I mean the the, the play that, that shocked me in the Niners last game was their first play of the second half after Debo was out. They did a shotgun handoff to Jawan Jennings. They were just like, Yeah, Jennings is just gonna one for one replace Debo. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, that's insane. But it wouldn't shock didn't me. Shanahan anything. comment after the game on that. Didn't he say something? I didn't hear it if he did. I oh, I think he, he was basically just like, yeah, you know, sometimes you, you get like a little caught up in the sh in the play call <laughs> and you don't realize like what's happening. <laughs> I would guess that would be his answer. 
But the, the idea is like building off that, that maybe with Debo a little banged up, Jennings runs a few more routes down the field, right? They're using – they admitted it was an accident. It was the first play of the second half. It was first and 10, 15 minutes on the clock. It was, you had the whole half to, to think about what you're, what you're doing coming out. Shannon got Debo was out. To start the second half? What are you doing at halftime? I didn't hear these quotes. That's crazy. Yeah. It was for yeah. He said it got mixed up. Yeah, Shanny, Shanny talked about basically forgot to buzz Play of the half. <laughs> I know it's wild. It's a long halftime, man. <laughs> He's out yes. there scheming up stuff for players who aren't in the game. That's wild. That is pretty wild. Forgot Debo was out. Well, the any, game any just kicked off finally. Three forty-two. Got it going. Lions are uh, getting ball first here. I'm. I'm pretty stoked about this game. I mean, I think the Niners are going to bounce back. You, One of the things, like when I wrote about this game for Stealing Lines, I took the Niners to cover. I uh, wrote about it from the perspective of during the regular season, you get games where teams don't look great, and then you sometimes get a little bit of value on them the next week where they're probably going to put in – like they have a letdown game. They're probably going to put in a good week of practice, and you kind of expect them to bounce back a little bit. There's ebbs and flows in an NFL season – you don't usually get that in the playoffs because when the teams have a game like that, like we just saw from the Ravens, they lose. They get eliminated. They That's their season. The Niners yeah. had that game and still won somehow. I imagine they really locked in this week. It'll be interesting to see how, how that plays out. I mean, obviously, both teams really want to win. The Lions are going to be locked in too, but <laughs> the Lions moving the ball pretty easily at, right away here. Oh, I'm behind. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Was that, was that Dave Mon- Okay. The run up the middle, just like almost a midfield on their second snap. Huge hole right up the middle. That's you're, too you're easy. Way, I'm way behind. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, God. I'm like way behind. <laughs> what are you watching? Oh, on? how? I'm just on YouTube TV. That's what I'm on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I'll, I mean, I can. I'll pause it for a sec. No, 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 because the the the, the audience will be. Yeah, yeah they're saying see, they're I just, behind. I too. just saw that run. I just saw that run. The chat's saying I live in the future. So yeah, dude, you what's just going saw... on, man? <laughs> you just saw what's that run. What's going on? <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude, You're we just behind. saw the run. All right, I think actually you might want to um, pause it. You might want to pause it because you're literally the entire chat thinks you're from the future. Oh, the chat. No, the chat. I did pause it and then I missed Jamison Williams. The chat goes, JMO, oh my God, TD. And now I'm seeing that TD. Jamison Williams touchdown. You know what? I'm going back to live. All you I'm guys see- who are behind the I'm chat. Seeing the Laporta dump up. I'm not, they're not yeah, even about Laporta to dump on the TD. Oh, yeah. No, you're, oh, my God. You're, this is a watch along stream where I'm watching the chat. <laughs> hell this is horrible yeah but i'm not letting the chat ruin it for me unfortunately oh no all right well i know we're not allowed to stream it um to youtube but ben can you stream your screen privately to me <laughs> so that i can see the game in real time it's on my phone like i don't know how i would do that send it to, to send discord, it on discord yeah 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 wow that was a that was a i mean Great first drive, Lions. Get Jameson Williams the ball in space. Have you seen the play yet, Pat? Yeah, I'm I'm seeing it right now. It's buffering. It's buffering. Wow, so that was a handoff, huh? Yeah, it literally buffered around. three times during the run. I'm like, I'm falling more behind. I'm already on commercial. They kicked the extra point. They're oh, way no. beyond it. All right. <laughs> Two million don't go as far as it used to. I know. <laughs> We've all been wondering where that money That's went. True, this guy That's, that is true. Put it away for the future and like didn't spend any of it. The most responsible millionaire I know. <laughs> I spent some of it. <laughs> <laughs> went to Paris. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to Paris. Uh, yeah. PFS are is correct. Par Par always had slow internet thing. He does correct, Pat. <laughs> oh man, this man, I blame, that... um, I blame Roto Pat for this. Um, I don't know if you saw. He had he had a tweet saying before the Ravens game that a team really traded up 
for Jamison Williams instead of Kyle Hamilton. And then the Ravens lost and Jamison scored a, a touchdown on the first drive. So this is Roto Pat's fault. If yeah, I, that feels your wonder. Do you have uh, CB? Do you have Demo and the captain? That's nice. It's a fun little showdown sweat. Yeah, that's. I mean, that was like a ten point play. I gotta imagine he was cheap, right? I don't. Know. I don't even play showdown anymore. But gotta imagine he was allowed you to stack a lot of high price players, right? Probably both quarterbacks and some pretty fun builds. So that's interesting. Yep. Um, all right. He's got at least one one team with a JMO captain. You, you'll love to see it. Um, nice. he's thirty seven hundred or thirty eight. We've got we've got a. Uh... <laughs> so Steph said thirty seven. Then we have reports of thirty eight k, and then Steph says I didn't do showdown. So I think we can get some here. Maybe. <laughs> uh, what is what is this turtlenecks meme that's starting here? The chat claiming I must. I have zero turtlenecks. Is because I of the guess because you're rich now. No, I mean oh, it's like a, yeah. a rich thing. You got to get like I'm, mahogany turtlenecks. You need like a cigar room. Like I mean, it's just like it all fits. I'm not launching. I'm not trying to be Steve Jobs. Is that? What <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think turtleneck. The first word I think of is mahogany. For some reason. <laughs> oh man. This is a hoodie. You're wearing this is one not now. a. This is a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man man that was uh a fun afc championship game yeah any thoughts on it's that it's kind of funny we spent a lot of time talking about baltimore buffalo i mean obviously kansas city too no one took them for granted but it did feel like you know when you're kind of building in these different playoff contests you wanted to think about ways to build through buffalo or baltimore is going to be one of their years and it's just Patrick Mahomes back in the Super Bowl, <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. even really like super competitive. Baltimore played, and he still doesn't have any wide receivers. Team. He scored seventeen points. Yeah, I That's mean, crazy. and and they know it. Like they're they break out Mahomes for a high leverage stuff, but more so than ever in in Kansas City's history, like in this game when Baltimore was shooting themselves in the foot, they were content to just like run three times and punt. And play, and they won 17 10. You know, like Casey of old was like, We're up 17 7, and you're shooting yourself in the foot. We're going to keep throwing. We're going to throw, throw, throw. We're going to score. We're going to beat you by 30. They're like, No, we're just going to continue to stay up by 10. And like their punter was sucking. Like he was punting at like 30 net yards, and they're still like, ah, It doesn't matter. We're not even flipping the field position, but we're just going to keep playing defense. Like, yeah. I mean, and they, they know that they don't trust their receivers. The, some of the games that they've lost this year have been because of, like, drops that became interceptions that became – go back to week one. You know, we were in Vegas at, at the, the watch yep. party, and, and Kadarius Tony dropping that pass, and the Lions running it back for a TD, and the Lions upset him on opening Thursday, largely because of that pick six, and it's a perfect throw. They're like, we're not going to let our receivers lose this game. <laughs> we're just not yeah. going to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I mean, they they literally didn't let Kadarius Tony play. Paulino says that Sneed play saved their asses. Did you see it? I assume that's the punch out. That's the Zach. punch out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there were several plays that saved them, but there was also several plays that the Ravens made. I tweeted about the the personal foul on Roquan Smith, and I know that looked like um, I don't know why that's the first thing that came to mind, but I know that looked like it was excessive because the the lineman's just in a stance and he just blows him up but you can i mean there's a plausible deniability there that you were trying to time the snap count that play happens a lot in games where a d lineman's trying to time the snap count and because the offensive lineman's not ready and he's in a stance he gets put on his ass yeah but they, i've was, never seen that, that called as a personal foul they, I, because I know it was, it was clearly intentional, intentional. They, they called yeah, bullshit. But they correctly called bullshit and also that it didn't point, matter it yeah. didn't matter like the field position didn't matter it didn't matter. You're right. It was a first down either way. It was, it was just yards. like a. It's just like a. We know what you did. Like you're a jerk. The, oh, um, Purdy. Yikes. What happened? Uh, just a deep shot to Ayuk where he tried to hit the defender, and Ayuk played some pretty good defense. <laughs> that's that's Man. offensive interference. That is offensive interference. He got there before. I mean, he's not playing the ball. He gets there before the ball comes down. 
I mean, good good offensive interference, but it was definitely offensive interference. The uh, <laughs> the other thing that was interesting about that game is, I mean, the Chiefs had some pretty bad penalties. I mean, they were legit holding penalties, but like you know, a Rasheed Rice touchdown called back. Like, oh my god, that play was so bad. Um, yeah, like they they did not play like a super clean game. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it was. And I think they know that. They know they're not good, but they still have Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. Like, when you have Patrick Mahomes, you can just win on the high leverage plays. But like one of the things I – so I also took KC for stealing lines. And one of the things when I wrote up that game I was talking about is, like, people think the Ravens are unstoppable until they're not, and then they think they're the worst team in football. They get – and Lamar gets this as well. They get the, the biggest shift, I think, in perception from what I see on social – between how good they are when things are running well and how bad they are when things are going bad. And I think it's the style of football they play. They're more of like a success rate team. They still create explosives, but they're more about like staying ahead of the sticks and some of that stuff. They still run a ton. They threw a lot more this year. They're 30th in pass attempts. They were number one in rush attempts. Like Lamar scrambles as well. And so you, you that's one of the things, even on dropbacks, they become rushes and you stay ahead of the sticks. When he runs for five yards on first and 10, it's second and five. You can run the ball with Gus Edwards. Now it's third and two. When they aren't operating well, when they aren't running the ball well, like they didn't even really try today, and a lot of people hated that, I think it was smart. I think you you just let Lamar be dynamic. But when they aren't operating well, they wind up in third and longs in those things, and their offense isn't designed to then go get 10 yards on cue when the defense knows that you're in third and long. That's right. Like, that's that's right. the thing about – like they can make explosive pass plays. They still have a good rate of explosive pass plays, but they're, I think, primarily – like the 49ers are a little like that too. Like the 49ers yes. are all about balance and put keeping you off balance because they're so good at everything. But then if you know exa- if you know they have to pass, it becomes right. tougher to stop. They're I- getting their explosives off balance on non-obvious passing plays and those types of things. Mahomes, the whole offense is built out of – what you end up having to do on third and 10. They're trying to stop Mahomes every snap from passing, right? So everything he's able to do actually lends itself to the highest leverage plays. And it's the same as when Brady was, you know, doing his thing, when Peyton Manning was doing his thing. When you have a quarterback like that who's an elite dropback passer who can read out plays and beat even coverages that are, are designed to stop passes on those particular downs, that then lends itself to the highest leverage plays when you're trailing, when you're behind, when it's third and long, even if you're ahead and you need that big conversion, all of those types of plays lend themselves to how KC typically wins, how Mahomes typically wins. He's used to that. What what happens with Lamar and all and, and, and Baltimore and all of those types of offenses is when they start to get third and long behind the sticks, it is a little bit different than when they're rolling and their offense is in rhythm and staying ahead of the sticks. And they're the, the, when they're rolling, they're just like, they are kind of like front run. Like they're, they're just better than you. And then they dominate you and they look so dominant. That's why like when I wrote this up, I took the Chiefs in the money line. But I also said if Baltimore wins, I think they cover the the spread that was like five or six points because they win going away. That's how they win games, right? Like they dominate and they go away. But I one of the notes I made was I love getting the value on the Chiefs at plus 185 because if it is a one score game late and I thought it could be a really close game late, I would take the Chiefs at like minus 150 at that point because then you want Mahomes in a one-score back-and-forth game with Jackson. The reason that Baltimore is favored is because they could win in the first three quarters. But if it's close late – They could win in the first quarter. I mean, they they could win in the first – yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you have the whole narrative that the Chiefs are so good in the second half, which, of course, they only let up a field goal in the second half. Um, They only let up a touchdown in the first half, so it was pretty – I mean – Without that Flowers fumble, they would have let up more points in the second and the first. But it was just not the spot you wanted to be in with the Ravens. They needed to come out of the gates, um, you know, really hot. And instead, they had a, a three and out. It was just, it was just really that was brutal. Tough. Do you do you think like when watching the game, I, there were I felt that Lamar had some opportunities to run the ball a bit more. I. It was tricky. It seemed like they were spying him. So, like, it looks like in the pocket he has room to move, but, like, maybe he didn't really have anywhere to run, so he's just trying to read out, like, man coverages downfield. We, I mean, we talk a lot about Mahomes not having great receivers. I think we saw that Lamar doesn't either. I'll, you know, once he got into a tough spot in this game where he needed to throw on third and longs more, you have Zay, and Zay makes some plays. Rashad Bateman obviously had a really rough year, uh, week. 
year. <laughs> um, Odell Beckham, there was that play. They, they didn't really get to use him. They didn't use him much at all. They can't use him because he's not particularly good. They tried to throw to him on the sideline on one play, and he did get grabbed and held back, and it should have been DPI if he was still fast enough to have gotten close enough to the mm -hmm. ball. But it was one of those mm -hmm. things where, like, the ball winds up so overthrown because you're, like, you're not fast enough to get that call anymore is what it comes yeah. down to. Like, you're not – they're just going to say that's uncatchable and they're going to let that hand fighting go. But if he's, like, showing some explosiveness, like he can get to that ball, he draws that penalty – I was looking at that play and I was like, man, this guy's making $14 million this year. And I don't think you can get him the ball in that spot. Be like, I think you got to take him off the field. You can't even go, you can't even get him to draw a DPI because he doesn't have the athleticism to, to draw the penalty anymore. You have Andrews banged up. And I mean, they, I think they just had a hard time getting guys open on a lot of those plays. You're talking about like he was looking to run. Like, should he have looked to run more? I mean, possibly. I kind of trust that he's a really good scrambler, obviously. I kind of trust that he, was seeing you know spies and, and didn't have a lot of places to go. You can't obviously see what he sees, but then you have to have guys winning one on ones downfield. Is the point I'm making? And he probably just didn't have a lot of guys winning one on ones downfield. Other than no. other than Zet, you know, did it a few times. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, there was there were a couple of plays. I saw Bateman <clears throat> was open on one play where he was kind of scrambling around, but it was it was late, and I think he probably pulled his eyes down. It, he did not have a lot of help. It's tough when Zay Flowers has that kind of game and is by far the the best weapon that he had. Yeah, <laughs> with with Andrew's well, and, not healthy and yeah, he played well, Zay, except for just like a few plays except where he's a massive liability. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You, I mean, you needed him to not be making huge mistakes for sure. Yeah. And Lamar didn't play well. I'm not trying to excuse Lamar. He didn't. He had a bad game. I think the frustration mounted. I think when things weren't going well, he started pressing. The the INT to Isaiah likely was obviously a you know a horrible decision. He's throwing into triple coverage. It doesn't even need to be said. Um, but at the same time, like I'm certain, I, I don't think it's a referendum on Lamar Jackson at, at all. That game, I mean, it was a game where like everything that could go wrong for Baltimore went wrong. They just kept making mistakes. I mean, he took a bad sack on a third down where they're on third and nine. They were in either go for it or field, long field goal range, and then they had to punt. Then they also had both of their turnovers in the end zone. I mean, that's three different drives where they could have got points, and because of the two turnovers in the sack, they don't get any points on any of those drives. I mean, that was, yeah, the chat saying taunting was Flowers Magnum Opus. That was, I mean, I was immediately, I saw the taunting call because Nance actually said it first. Oh, the Niners just missed a field goal. Wow. Nance said it first. He's like, they're going to get a, we're going to get a taunting call here. And I'm like, they're calling taunting right now after a huge play down to first and goal at the 10. How are they doing that? They show the replay and I'm like, probably should have gotten two penalties. <laughs> <laughs> It's like all the things that you can't do. He pushes him out to the play, throws the ball at him. That's one. Then yeah. stands and flexes over top of him when he's like literally player. everything you're not allowed to do. He did in one play. Yeah. Like, good lord, what are you doing? Yeah. Just so he he was brutal. It was a good game, but man, Baltimore it, like it, it should have been a better game. Baltimore didn't show up they didn't they didn't they, they robbed us of a potentially really good afc championship because the, the chiefs came out ready to play obviously and then they yeah. they just coasted yeah they scored 14 on their first two drives and and three the rest of the game they won 17 10 <laughs> man i know it's they crazy. scored yeah they scored touchdowns on their first two drives and didn't baltimore never got to 14 they didn't need another point. <laughs> I mean, that was a game. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really get – I mean, Lamar, it did feel like – it. just like you said, I mean, it's tough to know exactly when he should take off and run versus not. But there were a few times where I was like, he really should have taken – like, it just felt like he should have taken off. And, like, when he caught that pass to himself, he was like, oh, my God. And the, the other time, when, well, I think it was fourth and one where he – he got loose and just like he is so fast, yeah. And they, they didn't really. I know they did a good job of. Uh, Romo was talking about how you know they're blitzing and it was kind of acting like a spy because everyone's staying in their lanes and it just like made it difficult for Lamar to take off a lot. But he, I think he had a few more opportunities. To me, like that's that's as bad as 
kind of anything else. Cause like the, other than the triple coverage throw, which is just absolutely brutal, but like, you know, are we really blaming Lamar a ton for the strip sack? Like that kind of stuff happens, you know, like, I don't think that's like him. That's not a, like a letdown situation from Lamar, in my opinion. Pete is doing, we didn't even say it, but Pete is doing bedtime with April. It's right at bedtime. He's very routine based and we obviously all respect that. He's going to be here. He said he'd be here right around now. So he'll be here any minute. Um, yeah, Pat, my thought on that was just that like when he did get loose, like I was just checking this, his long run. It's <laughs> <laughs> April the bed. <laughs> When, when Lamar uh, did get – I went and checked just now and when you were talking about that. I was surprised to see that his long run was 21 yards, but I, I do remember that play now. But that I Lamar thought, run. like, yeah, I thought most of the plays where he got loose – yeah, exactly. It was that fourth and one where, like, it was kind of a unique play. But most of the plays where he got loose on a scramble, he didn't actually, like, have space to run like we're used to. I, I agree with you. He looks faster than everybody on the field, and you're like, do this more. But I think defensively they had guys in those spaces where they were limiting to like five yard runs at most, and sometimes were able to like sack him when he was not getting the ball out quick. So I think he was trying to get the ball out a little quicker. He ends up with eight carries for fifty four yards with that twenty one yard fourth down run. So the other seven went for thirty three. Like that's fine, but like usually I think he averages more and has like some you know at least one other long run. Yeah, there was like a period, I would say like kind of the third quarter, I wanted to see more of it. Because then by the time you get in the fourth quarter, running the ball gets harder to do. And But they had, a, I think, a window where they could have made the Chiefs fear that a little bit more. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah, it's. It, I don't know. It's. It's. I guess it's hard to say because I, I, I guess my read is the Chiefs very much feared it and built their whole defense around like that number one. And then we're like, you have to beat us in one-on-ones downfield. And right. Right. They didn't. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, like, did not. <laughs> they did not. You got an injured Mark Andrews. The Andrews thing was a letdown. Someone mentioned that in the chat. Like for sure. For sure. We ended up playing him on our NFC thing. I was pretty confident that he was, going to at least be using like the red zone spots. They were taking him out in some key spots. And then he went to the locker room in like the third quarter. Like he wasn't, he wasn't healthy. The, the health was a risk and he wasn't healthy, man. Lions. I, I mean, I thought the Niners were going to lead in this game and the lions came to play. <laughs> I, I love Dan Campbell, dude. I, I, yeah. It would be very fun if Dan Campbell upset. It Tom. would be God. so fun. And it was the first game of the year. Lions upset the Chiefs yeah. in Arrowhead to start the season. Yeah. And then if that was the Super Bowl, how cool would that be? And, and after the Lions like missed the Super Bowl or missed uh, missed the playoffs last year, it would it would wow. be fun if they had made the Super Bowl. So Pete. How are we looking? Well, I'm behind. I don't know where you are. We've been chatting about Baltimore and, and Kansas City for the most part, like just breaking that game down. I'm still not over that, man. That was brutal. Yeah, that was tough for our sweats for sure. But, I mean, tough for Baltimore fans too. I mean, I know there's a lot of – I saw Jack was going through it on Twitter, just having a <laughs> on meltdown. Was he? He was, he was having a tough uh, time. Blo- blocking anyone who replied to him. And uh, <laughs> oh, I, almost, that kind of day, I, huh? almost, I almost decided to test. Blocking anyone who replies to him. <laughs> Jack was uh, Jack's also a Texas Longhorn fan and was talking a lot of crap about uh, UW before the Texas UW Sugar Bowl. And so he was someone that I was – I got a little kick out of it. when UW was able to win that game. I got, you know, it was a little, oh yeah, a little extra fun for that. I mean, you you do like when you are that much of a public fan, you 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 have to take yeah. the good and the bad. Like if you want to downplay it and like in the quiet of your own home, you're just like living and dying by this team. Well, guess what? Then when they lose, you don't have to deal with all the shit. <laughs> right. You're ready to victory lap. Then you got to play the other side of the coin. For sure. That's a great point. <laughs> um, so I'm at 450 right now uh, in the – Yeah, I'm at like 
I'm at like 521 right now. I, my <laughs> this is the slowest any game has ever gone for. Lions me. Lions came out hot, Pete. If you haven't caught any of the game because you're doing bedtime, uh, Jamison Williams took an end around like 40 yards for TD. San Fran did drive, but sell for a field goal and then missed it, like a 48 yarder, I want to say. And so, and then the Lions, they had ball first, but they're looking to score again on their second drive. Wow. I mean, <clears throat> for our for our underdog, I mean, obviously having the Niners in a throwing script is very good. And we got to imagine Goff keeps chucking it. Oh, yeah. 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 He's, uh, uh they're carving him up. He's <laughs> so far behind. I just saw an incompletion. And I'm like, <laughs> it takes I'm at, I'm at 431. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why I'm so far behind. Even on your phone? Yeah, <coughs> and it keeps buffering, so I keep falling further behind. <laughs> Brutal. That'd, that'd be funny if they were punishing you. Like, every time you buffer, they're like, no, we're putting a 10-second penalty. That's what it is, dude. I won't let me catch <laughs> up. Like I, I was – I paused – so I could fall back to where Crane was before I realized how <laughs> far back he was and how futile it was. But like, I paused for a minute, and then the chat was like, "Touchdown, Jameson Williams!" And I was like, "Fuck this! I'm going back. I'm not gonna let the chat break in like, for me." I'm like, "Dude, I hope they don't blow it to the Packers here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually confused. I was uh, I was over in a different Streamyard room simulcasting uh, sixty minutes. They had some cool stuff on the African safari. I thought you guys were going to join me over there, but <laughs> no. dude, I I tweeted Mahomes is fourteen and three in the playoffs, and like a little joke that his win loss record is would be locking up a number one seed by Christmas. His playoff win loss record is like yeah. good enough for a regular season one seed. Some somebody hit me with the wins on a QB stat in the comments. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, I mean, come on, this is <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, that is so funny and it, and it goes and then, especially given he just scored zero in the second half all right all right you got me there he didn't score any points in the second half has anyone checked in on our guy madison i haven't checked on his twitter feed no i haven't checked madison's twitter feed it's not gonna not gonna be good <sighs> truthering patrick Mahomes was never gonna go well <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough lane to get into. It's a tough lane. I, I, don't, I don't know if he got assigned that lane somehow or how that's happened, but you know, it's a tough draw. Whoever assigned it's a tough it, draw. It's a tough I don't draw. know. You know All right, there it is. <laughs> what happened, Monty TD? Monty TD. I'm seeing Barry Sanders clap about that TD. <laughs> How about, I feel like normally we're always pretty in sync. I guess that was the Amazon Prime stuff. It's the though, Amazon right? Prime, yeah. yeah. What are you watching it on, Pat? Or uh, Ben? YouTube TV. Oh. We're both on YouTube TV, Me which too. is making our – we're like that much more confused why Pat's YouTube TV is so far behind. Yeah. I just saw the Monty TV just, just now. Oh, they've got Ford Field filled up. They're showing <laughs> uh, some clips of that right now. I'll just narrate to you so you know what's coming. So you never feel yeah. – you know, What do you mean they've got Ford Field filled up? Like they're, they're doing a watch show, party. Going to commercial. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like that used to be a, more of a thing. Maybe, maybe it happens and I just don't know about it. But I know like even in the um, – I'm thinking back to like the, the 90s too that – I want to say it was when the Nuggets were maybe making a run that when they upset the Seahawks and they would like on the away games, they would like pack out the old uh, McNichol sports arena to like watch the games there. I just remember teams hosting those watch parties far more often than I hear about them now. Yeah, I don't I, I don't remember a team doing this, but it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I wonder what, like, if they just have the exact same, like, alcohol laws as normal where they have to shut it off at a certain point. <laughs> they have to shut it off in the third quarter or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, shit. Nick in the hopper says he's also on YouTube TV and he's just behind his pat. So we got, I mean, All right. we got some interesting uh, YouTube TV stuff. Maybe I'm going to go over to the private chat and just, uh, I'll just sweat the game with Nick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't let the comments do their thing. I'm sick. Don't of watch the comments. 
<laughs> this is an interesting start to this game, guys. 14 nothing. I thought we would have uh, the Niners come out looking better in this game, honestly, after last yeah. week. But maybe they're just you not that called, good. You know who called the Chiefs Lions Super Bowl? Who? Who? Tyreek. Tyreek. That's right. Plus. Yeah. Just this week. This Just week. This week. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not, uh, not like not months ago. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's um and both underdogs. But uh we were talking before you came on, Pete. This was the first game of the year. We watched this in Vegas. The Lions or that game was the first game of the year. The Lions upset oh, the yeah. Chiefs on Thursday night football. Holy and they beat them in Arrowhead, and that could potentially be the rematch, the last game of the, in Vegas, of the season. where we all were when we in Vegas. Game. There you go. Wow, it all comes full circle. It really does. So, I I have such from both every year, you know, because I've been I normally go uh, watch the Super Bowl with the underdog folks, and then we always watch you know the opening game in Vegas, and I have so little memories of those games because I'm just talking and drinking with people mm-hmm. the whole time. And mm-hmm. like I can barely remember anything from like the games themselves. Like if you ask me who won that Chiefs Lions game right now, I dead ass don't know who won. <laughs> Someone want to tell me? The Lions. The Lions. Okay, thank you. I figured you would have checked at some point like after week. that week. <laughs> no, I, I was waiting for uh, to be pleasantly surprised. Let's keep yeah. it. Uh, wow. <laughs> the Lions won. 21 to 20, I want to say. They won in large part because of a pick six on a drag route to Kadarius Tony that hit him right here. Hmm. And it just bounced up to the DB who caught it and ran it back. For being so fantasy uh, irrelevant, Kadarius Tony sure has been a main character for so much of the Chiefs this season. He really has. (laughs) The Instagram thing this morning. Yeah. Well, and of course, the, the infamous, you know, Travis Kelsey. Uh, pass against the Bills where he was all oh, yeah, sides. Of course, of course, yeah. That not all of us, him you know, anything is just pretty funny. I know. All right, Brock, start slinging it. Wait, are you are you guys on first and ten here? Yeah. Oh wow. Deep uh, under. Deep I under. Deep under. Deep I'm on oh, second. Oh, and four. I'm caught up. You're caught no, up. I'm- I'm lined up on second and four. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm Tebow's jogging around. Purdy's chucking it downfield. Kyle Juszczyk, deep downfield. No This way. is a real play. I'm not making this up. Did he catch you'll, it? You'll be able to... Yeah, he did. It's a stuff deep, showdown. Deep middle. We played the wrong... We had the wrong discussion about the deep middle. It was Kyle Juszczyk. Was it correct? <laughs> it's Kyle Juszczyk in the splash zone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yep. The <laughs> chat, don't be that guy. Yeah, I won't be that guy again. I was, I was just messing around. I was just showing where I was. Actually. Hey, Ben has the green light to spoil all future Kyle Juszczyk plays. Yeah. <laughs> all out. Who cares about that? <laughs> the Niners got to gotta go get a, a score on this drive. But Lions had ball first. This game's not in any way no, over. No. I mean, obviously. the Lions defense is, you know, it's that. That guy in the clown suit meme, you know, it's the it's the defense that sticks out of all the units in this in all the offenses and defenses. The Lions' defense is the one where you're like, how did this make it to the conference championship? <laughs> and it's largely because the Cowboys lost and they got a home game against the Bucks. Like, I mean, that's yeah, right. It's like you should have had to go through Dallas. <laughs> is really the, the answer. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean. So clean for them. The Packers just get super hot, beat Dallas, and then go lose to the 49ers. Right. And they just get to play the Bucks. I mean, we all love the Lions. I mean, I, I think I don't I don't want to speak for you guys. I, I love the Lions. I think most people in no, I, I love, love them too. Them. Yeah, they're they're fun as hell. They're they have that stat. Uh Jim Nance said it earlier. I didn't realize they're the only team that's been around that's played in every season since the start of the Super Bowl. Uh, era, uh, Super Bowl one that has never made the Super Bowl. So if they win this game, they will be the first. This will be their first trip to the Super yeah. Bowl ever. Um, I won. Uh, did the Browns fit that as well? Is that why they said that have played every year because the Browns didn't play a couple Maybe. of years? 
I can't think of any other year they made it. They were good in the 80s, but they, I think they lost to the Broncos, the drive, and the Ernest Biner fumble and that stuff. I think, And then obviously, like, the, the Texans haven't made it, and, like, you know, there's a couple teams like that. but Right, the expansion stuff there. But, yeah, I, that must be it, Ben, because they didn't have that one year. Right. Or was it a couple years? But that's crazy. I mean, the Lions have been around. They won NFL championships – the decade before the Super Bowl, they won like I think it's like three in the fifties or something like that, or in the early sixties, and then they've never even made it back. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and I, you know, like Dan Campbell's so fun. You know, like you think you think about like an analytics type of guy, and you would, you know, you think about like someone who acts like Brandon Staley, but like as someone who is very pro, like going for it and playing aggressively and all that stuff. Like I also found Brandon Staley kind of weird and annoying. Like I, I didn't. I was just <laughs> yeah. hoping he. I was just hoping there'd be a coach who like went for it, and then of course he ended up being a terrible coach and didn't really do analytical stuff for the most part. Um, but I love that Dan Campbell's like the, you know, has all like the appearances of of the ultra football guy, blasting out his eardrums with Metallica, and then he's super into going for it. Like that's amazing. I strongly prefer that. He's he's like the only enigma like that, right? Of all the rah rah coaches that isn't, which is weird because you would think like the rah rah, the leader of men would be like, let's, I trust your offense, let's go right. for it. Exactly. Whereas then, like a guy like Pete Carroll is just like, no, oh, pun it, quit, get it, get it. Yes, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> if you're the leader of men, like why aren't you like, we're in it together, let's take them down? Like, it's it makes I can't sense. even envision a world where we don't pick up this fourth and one, brother. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> them how we don't succeed, man. <laughs> it's so good. Right. All right, I got a trivia question for you guys. You ready? Because I actually went to look up the Detroit Lions franchise. What is the first year the Detroit Lions played in the NFL? The they had a different name prior. The first year of the Detroit Lions. Different name prior. I mean, I don't know. Were they like late sixties? Like th no, like third, like the thirties, thirty thirties. No, wait, I guess I was thinking when they became the Lions. So you're saying when they were whatever this version? Are you saying what do you what are you asking us? The, <laughs> what, the first year of the Detroit Lions. So when they oh, so when version. they changed their names, when they moved to Detroit, they were in a different city. Even okay, okay. Um, Their encyclopedia shows a different city. I'll take forty-eight. No, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say forty-nine. The Forty ers CMC, let's go. Gretch, don't leave us hanging with this trivia question. Oh, I thought you were gonna answer me. <laughs> Nineteen thirty-four. Uh, Pat's okay. first answer oh. was thirty-three. You were off by wow. one year. I, I I shifted off of it. What a I kind of I kind of threw you guys off with that other little note, but so they were the Portsmouth Spartans for four years, and then they became really? the Detroit Lions. So I was I was trying to clarify. I was looking for the year they became the Detroit Lions, but yeah, 1934. They've been around. Yes, yeah, the NFL I thought you were 1934. Wow, that's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, 90th uh, or 89th year or 90th year this year. That's crazy. Wow, that is crazy. And they won the championship of the NFL in their second season as the Detroit Lions in 1935. And then three more times in the 50s, and they have not made the championship game since 1957. A lot less passing Crazy. back then, though, I would say. <laughs> A lot, A lot more biting, biting kneecaps. kneecaps. <laughs> Did lockstep. Wow, Juszczyk. A big part of the game plan here. <laughs> I would definitely that? Uh, that CMC passing TD uh, would be really fun to get out of the way here yeah I have a couple uh, gauntlet type sweats we got that really use a CMC too. rushing TD which we'll take god okay. damn it that's very good I mean we'll take we'll take it yeah. yeah well we have the fantasy points on the five leg we do yeah that's why it's it's still very nice man I'm just realizing though that correlates with our Badgley under. He already has two extra points. So gonna need the Lions to stop scoring. <laughs> yeah, because with part of the thesis of that was the Lions would be down by, right. by the like, leader of men. A script right. that, that we are very much not in is what we were playing. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. You still have a shot if they just never kick a field goal, right? Like they could score 28 and have four extra points and you go under. I mean, it's still it's still a lot. Yeah. The chat is telling me that this is incorrect. Uh, definitely incorrect. Ben butchering the question. I mean, Pro Football Reference says they started as the Portsmouth Spartans in 1930 and became the Detroit Lions in 1934. So take it up with them. I thought I clarified that. These guys are like everyone no, else saying it's 1930. These people are mad. Like, <laughs> I don't see anyone who's mad. Well, this one that says Ben oh, butchering the question. Yeah. If you get I didn't actually history mean wrong, that. people will come after you from my experience. <laughs> I well, I'm 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 kidding about the big map, but I am curious what the answer to the uh trivia question actually is. Am I, I missing had something? A mob come after me for insinuating that Ford Field was named after Jerome Ford and not the car. I mean, these guys will get <laughs> pissed. What if it was named after Jerome Ford? How would that even happen? <laughs> did you just say that ford field was named after jerome ford i mean i wrongly said it and then people came after me <laughs> that's great that'd be pretty weird i don't know i just think he's he's a cincinnati running back i think he's pretty good man do you guys ever hear that I, I remember when i was a kid i don't know and i was never like a car guy but i remember one time this kid told me he, he like came up to tell me a joke and he goes you know what ford stands for it's like no found on the roadside dead which i apparently there was a battle back then i don't know if he was on team chevy i don't know if he was more of a japanese <laughs> car guy or what but <laughs> found on roadside dead i was like noted i will never grow up and buy a ford have you ever had a ford <laughs> i haven't no i've been so, anywhere, well, it looks, looks like he uh that propaganda worked it. yeah <laughs> it did i was programmed from a young age to think that they're lemons found I drove a Ford Explorer from – it wasn't my first car, but I want to say my senior year in high school because my first car was like a beater old Nissan Maxima. Senior year in high school, all through college, after college, drove it for years. Never was found on the roadside debt. That thing was reliable. <laughs> Got me through a lot of times. Took it to the Grand Canyon and back. A lot of good times in that Ford. So I'm – I like, this I like that people are trying to say two completely made up acronyms that one of them is correct. Uh, apparently there was a fix or repair daily when found on roadside debt is far more effective. Like, yeah, yeah you, that's that, that sticks with you. Like not yeah. to get political, but like the Democrats would come up with fix or repair daily and Donald Trump would be like found on roadside dead and the crowd <laughs> would go fucking wild. <laughs> that is just accurate. That's, it. that's, just that's how, true. That's, That's just not, the world we live in. That's not, not deniable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking up where Portsmouth is now. The chat wants me drunk. This is my uh, sober month. Uh, you now you got. I'm doing Google Maps now. Portsmouth is in Ohio. If you guys were curious. The uh, what do you got, Ben? <laughs> Couple more days. The first. I'm going to, I mean, I, so I, I drank on my trips to New Orleans and Houston. So I'm going to do a full month from when I got back after the national championship. So at least another week. I don't know. Didn't really yeah. put a timer on it. I, uh, I drank heavily uh, on my trip, uh, last week and I have not had a sip of alcohol since coming back. I feel like I needed my own little detox there. That's right. I had three beers on Thursday night. And uh, was like hungover Friday, so I haven't, I, I haven't drank. Wait, yet. when I met up with you? No, no, this past Thursday. Oh, this past Thursday, yeah. Yeah, I had literally three beers, and then I'm, I was like, I think I'm gonna take a, take a weekend off. <laughs> yeah. I say, I, oh my goodness! Three beers and get a hangover. I mean, what? This is well, knowing you, they were probably like four point three percent. IPAs or something. No, they they were like five and five point four percent. Oh, they're grim. I found grim. Uh oh, San Diego. What happened? Oh, <laughs> you just just watch your watch your screen coming up here in fifteen seconds. It's a very funny. I, I was planning to watch my screen, so thanks thanks for the. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your oh, I, I won't root it for you. I got in trouble from the chat for rooting it. No, I like generic. Oh I boy, do. trick oh, play. Whoa. 
Oh God. <laughs> God. It just died. <coughs> That's right. I think the reason to do a trick play is that you kind of forget that Goff is the one who threw it. You sort of think like, oh, that's because like, you know, Jameson Williams threw it or whatever. Right. He oh, must God. just like not have gotten grip on the ball. <laughs> the ball the ball hit a pigeon. Randy Johnson did. <laughs> the ball hit we a just pigeon. right now start seeing the feathers just come down. <laughs> Wow, that's a good throw. Oh no, Rotopat with the perfect tweet. That's one. That's somebody. When someone says that, I'm like, I'm gonna go to Rotopat's page because he's hilarious. And it will be oh, correct. Tweet with. <laughs> Golf pass shot down by anti-aircraft fire. <laughs> <laughs> I loved his tweet uh, earlier about when the Steelers announcing like mid-game that they had interviewed Arthur Smith on Twitter from their public Twitter account. <sighs> Trying to get a little news dump, like we do feel obligated to tweet this out to our followers, but we kind of don't want the rest of Twitter to get a hold of it. Do you think we can he, sneak it out right now? He hasn't gotten a job and doesn't appear to be likely to get any of the OC jobs, correct? I mean, are we okay there for the most part? I mean, the Steelers going from Matt Canada to Arthur Smith would just be absolutely That would be pretty That'd funny. Be rich. Been a lot of Dave Montgomery in this game so far. Not sure why. Because they're ahead. I mean, he's like okay, but like he's a leader I, of men. Yeah. <clears throat> the golf pass shot down by anti aircraft fire. So, of the two remaining possible Super Bowl combos, are you know specific rooting interests aside, just like completely in a vacuum, like what Super Bowl would you like to to watch the most? I don't even know what our rooting interests are. <laughs> <laughs> Me either, uh, really. But I, I just mean aesthetically, like what would be the funnest Super Bowl to watch? I think it would be Chiefs Lions. It's Chiefs yeah. Lions. I think almost objective. We've already seen Chiefs Niners in the last ten years. I mean, what was it like five years ago? You you get you get Dan Campbell Media Week first of all. I mean, that's going to be True. fun. And then I also think the game itself. You're going to have the Chiefs offense is not the fun Chiefs offense. Yeah. of old so the lions defense unlocks that a little bit you know and then you can run on the chiefs that's kind of the way you want to attack the chiefs so that kind of plays the what the lions want to do so i think it actually be a pretty good game with with scoring the chats having a rough start they're talking they're quoting david montgomery's yards per carry when he ran through the biggest hole that i've ever seen on the second play we highlighted it me and pat and had a big gain, and then he was getting stuffed at the line of scrimmage otherwise. I mean, wake up. Jesus. Wake up. Pull, pull your head out of the Detroit Lions history spreadsheet. Please. And watch some football. Wake up. Good oh. Lord. Must be your first game. <laughs> God. Must be your first game. They're punting at the 46 on fourth and six. I don't love that decision. My kneecaps feel intact. But, you know, rooting interest-wise, I do have some some playoff best ball sweats if if it's Casey San Francisco. So, yeah, that's that's my rooting interest. I think I think our collective rooting interests were really tied to the Ravens winning. Yeah, <laughs> all of our good stuff uh, kind of went down the drain. Yeah, we, we got to get some Purdy on this drive, guys. For our yeah. uh, although he has eighty-eight yards already, we 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 could use some Ayuk on this drive for sure. I was gonna say, I feel like it's been an eternity since we got an Ayuk splash play. Yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> Looking at the box score now, Jameson Williams averaging forty-two yards per carry. They should be giving him carries every play. <laughs> yeah, why aren't they giving him <laughs> more carries? That's 
That's almost half the field per carry. Yeah. It's really good, really good decision. I think if you, if you just give him the ball, you get forty two yards. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a football coach, just, but I, I would probably give it to the guy who gets half the field per carry. Dude, what did what did that JMO end around? Due to his ADP next year, like that, had <laughs> that to cost carry, us yeah. like two and a half rounds it at did. least. Yeah, it it did. Did. <laughs> I'm wondering where, where do you think he goes? Right on that borderline of the wide receiver window, like the tenth round or something like that. Honestly, I think that's where he was going to go. I and now he's going to go in the eighth round. He's going in Kadarius uh, Tony territory now. Yep. He's this, this year's eight. Kadarius Tony. He's this year Kadarius Tony. That's yes. exactly right. That is exactly right. <laughs> Bateman Burks. He's the he's the guy, the upside story you can tell yourself after wide receiver sure. dries up more than you were hoping. And I'll probably draft some. <laughs> Unless I don't know, man. If I have an off season of Davis telling me the the vibes are bad around JMO at Lions camp might get me off of him. Honestly, like you know, zero running back probably gonna be pretty hard to execute next year, just given how it won everything this year when everyone said the ADPs were too high. So <laughs> I can't imagine it's gonna course correct, given that it seems to be the nuts. But it's uh it's all the more reason. Like if you need to talk yourself into drafting. You know, all these wide receivers that what are you going to feel like very, very high prices in the early rounds? The other option is probably to have a massive bag of Jameson Williams. Yeah. Because you're draft you're drafting running backs there if you if you go zero running back. And that's seven. I did a with fit with fantasy life, we did a an early mock draft um the other day, and I was like begging to call it like after eight or nine rounds. Cause I'm just like without rookies, without free and mm -hmm. stuff like it, it just got gross. So, so fast. I actually yeah. took Jamison Williams in that mock draft. I think in the, in the ninth or 10th round, um, but yeah, got some nice CLV there in the mock draft streets, but it is, it's going to be tough out there. McCaffrey's right. cruising along for, for his fantasy yeah. points. Nico feels like a two three turn guy. That's I've been working on my my rankings and uh two, three that's where I have him. Nico? That's really? where I have him, yeah. Am I crazy yeah. to want tank over Nico? I don't think so, but I have tank in the same area. All right. Yeah, as long as you have him close. I have him very close. I think I might have him back to back. I guess it I guess it makes sense. Nico and tank in the two three turn? Yeah. You're just betting. You're betting on Stroud to take another step forward, and um, they both were awesome. I mean, if they, they keep like, slow it, like why wouldn't you be in on that offense? Yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I, people people immediately saying they're Dell over over Nico, and I think that's that's fine. I I was I mean, didn't Dell break his ankle? Like it's a yeah. It, you, there's some concern I think with the. Like I would like a little bit of an injury discount on that, given that Nico was was awesome, right? And is I'm, bigger, I'm, has the body. To, so one of the things, like we've seen a lot more small players be successful in the modern NFL, where you can't do a lot of the like bad penalties now and bad hits that can break players. One of the low key storylines that we have not talked enough about that I think does need to be addressed is a lot of the ones that have been really good did get hurt a lot this year. Like Keaton Mitchell was sweet and then got hurt. Devin A. Chan missed time. Um, there was another uh, smallish running back who uh, – Kyron Williams was really, really, really good, but also missed went – went on IR for a stretch. We talked about him being undersized. Came back and was awesome. Tank Dell gets injured. Like it's still hard to be 180 pounds on a football field for 17 games. That's not easy to do. You Your body is smaller. Tyron, I think, is probably more like 199 or something at this point. I, I don't fair. Yeah, fair. He, yeah, he's he's, he's maybe not the right one, but it's just another guy that we talked a little bit about size issues. A lot of the size stuff that we were like, oh yeah, you, you everyone was oh my god, Purdy. Dude, he, he's overthrown Ayuk on back to back plays. Yeah, well, he just hit a linebacker in the chest, and it's a turnover. <laughs> 
flag. Man, Brock Purdy went from uh there's a calling him a pumpkin in the chat. He went from MVP oh for some God. people to like I'm gonna prove to everyone that I was never in that discussion. Like I'm going <laughs> to show so clearly that I don't deserve that. I mean, he's had some rough outings. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Is I'm that roughing the passer? Pretty... What? Okay. What's that personal foul? There's a personal foul on the defense. Still first down to Detroit. It must have been after the play. Wow. His hand Sorry. got hit. Isn't this the exact same way he went out last year in the division? Is he round? hurt. I think that that's why the throw was so bad. Is what Paul's saying. I oh, I, I thought. Okay, hurt. I read that no. it's got hurt. I don't. I think he's okay. Oh, after the play, somebody just came up and blew up Debo for no reason. Yeah, I, no, I get that his hand got hit, but like it was a collapsing pocket, and he tried to stand in there and deliver a ball to the middle of the field with a lot of defenders there. Like right when he started to throw that, I was like, "Uh oh, that this could be a turnover." Like your arm is in jeopardy of getting hit when you stand in the pocket and it starts to collapse, and you still try to make that throw. Like take a sack. I mean, that's one of the big things there. They got fortunate that the Lions got a 15-yard penalty at the end of that play, and they're all the way back to like their own 50. So the the tank discussion, really looking forward to buying the tank tip. There's not going to be a tank There's tip. There's going to be no dip. There's no dip. He's going to go with a 2-3 turn. I don't know. I mean – Debo broke his shoulder like three days ago in his playing. Injuries don't matter anymore. These guys. Yeah. Yeah. All of I, all of the comments on Tank have come from that Marshall guy. He he said he go or Tank first. I'm Tank easily. Then he was commenting on broken bones, and now he's talking. Yeah. About it. Just for the record, it's one. But I think his own tank dip. Yeah. yeah there's no tank dip. <laughs> and he's fine. Yeah, that's, go he's for saying Marshall. there's a chance we see him in the Garrett Wilson range if he finishes the year. I I suppose that's possible, but um. I, I don't know that we would have, no. you know, and I don't, and I kind of doubt, to be honest, that's normally reserved for guys who expect to step up as true number ones the following year. Right. Tank doesn't really profile as. Garrett, Garrett Wilson was, what, where, where did he go in the NFL draft? To me, Ten? what they, he was like the, yeah, it's like 12. Do you know what they profile to me as? Like a, yeah. an ADP comparison or whatever. They're like the more sexy version of the Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Where you you like heading put yourself yeah, back in your frame right. of reference where you like the quarterback you like the offense you like both those guys as talents you're taking Keenan mid third Mike Williams round four but you're just going to push these guys up because they're younger and on a more sexy trajectory right I think it's right and I think the advantage of taking a guy like Tank is that there's a chance he emerges as the true number one over Nico over you know, the second half of 2024 season where, you know, like some of those veteran guys, we, we know a little bit more about the target pecking order. We can feel more comfortable. Like they really are kind of co wide receiver ones or whatever. Um, So you're like, you know, so Nico and tank are somewhat negatively correlated where one could kind of emerge over the other. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I mean, to your point, too, like uh, when I, at first I was like, oh, wow, both of them up there. But it's like the market has no problem, you know, taking two wide receivers from the same team. I mean, we had, what, three sets of round one, two pairs last yeah. year in round one. Yeah. Um, I I was a little bit sidetracked. Oh, Jameer Gibbs. I was a little bit sidetracked and – uh you may have said this, but I like the Consigliere's point here. No one has ever been tank size and picked in the first. I don't. I think that's true. I don't think there's ever been a first round pick in fantasy football that's as small as he is. And I think there's a reason for that. Like I don't How think big enough was, like, people. The, the Philip Dorsets and John Rosses, those guys were even bigger than him. Oh, I was thinking first round of fantasy football. You're thinking oh first, first round, round of fantasy. NFL gotcha, draft. gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So for for tank to be like a late first round pick next year. People will have to get real comfortable with his size, and I think that's tough, man. Gibbs team. I mean, I'll tell you one guy who I think probably was that small would be Tyreek. Yeah, <coughs> Larry threw out Reek. He's that small. 
reached way bigger than that. His weight is like five eight. Weigh more. I think he's, I think he weighs a good chunk more. Yeah, he's like two yeah. He weighs. You're right. He weighs more. Tyree kills like two ten. He is now, but when he first when he first came on the scene, he was much smaller. Was he? Yeah. Wikipedia has him listed as one ninety one. That's crazy. I thought he was like. I mean, he's. Let me look up what he weighed in it. Uh, in the combine and stuff. He would. He came in the league at one eighty five. That's that's so, wild. so still significantly more than Tank. How how big is Tank? I'm looking up his weigh in. Uh, one one sixty five. <laughs> yeah. So you're not getting so, him in the first round. I mean, you can take him in the first round, but he's not going in the first round at one sixty five, guys. That's not how yeah five eight one sixty five is a tough first round fantasy pick. Who also got a serious injury in his first season. And there's got to be questions about whether he can take enough hits over the course of a season to put up the numbers you have to put up. Like, that is Sounds a like thing. a dip is coming, guys. Hearing lots of takes no fun right now. The dip is coming. Yeah, Devontae Smith would be another appropriate comp. But I, the weight doesn't matter. And also, like, weight, like, very, very much still matters. Like, there's, like, Devontae Smith would probably be, like, an actual number one wide receiver if he was. The size of a number one wide receiver, like he's very <laughs> he's very skilled. But he, there's a reason why the size of a number one wide receiver. There, there's a reason why Devontae Smith, you know, even with awesome draft capital and a team trying to install him as a number one wide receiver before trading for a real number one, like there's a there's a reason why he is what he is, which is a really 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 good number two wide receiver, you know. And I think that's probably where Tank Dell. And what he ends up becoming, or maybe he could be a one A, and but I don't know. It's like it doesn't. It's not like if a guy just because he's small, we need to write them off or something. That's that's obviously nuts. But I do think that when we're talking about the difference between taking a guy in the top twelve versus a two three turn, we should be factoring in things like weight because we're trying to factor in. We're trying to find the guys who can have the alpha target shares. The, the more we talk about this, the more I do like what you said from the beginning about having them both kind of near each other at around the two, three turn. I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Having Just said that, Jackson was another, uh, another guy people are bringing up. Am I doing something wrong? I just went to PFF to look at, I usually have these in like spreadsheets, but to look at their listed yards per out run, regular season and postseason, Nico Collins. It's it says three, probably. Over three. Yeah. No, he was unreal. Nico Collins had a 3.1 yards per route run this year. Yeah. Tank Dell was 2.2, which is still really, really, really good for a rookie. Yeah. But Nico did it over a way larger sample because he did it into the postseason. He played he a lot did it more against games. some really tough defenses. Yeah. Three plus yards per route run for Nico, and he's got the, the size and held up to an NFL season. He's deep threat as well. Like he's he he's a guy you want to be you want to be drafting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Honestly, like I well, think he, you take whichever he, guy goes later. Like you you know, and you and you want exposure to both. Like this is an offense yeah. we're going to want to be in on. Like I'm not anti tank, but I'm anti <laughs> tanks like a top twelve value or something. Yeah, I. And it's almost kind of, it won't seem like a discount, but it's like a discount relative to when you take AJ Brown in the first round and then Devonte Smith ends up having like when those guys who do have lots of competition and you're paying like a much higher premium for the one that you slightly prefer. Yep. It's almost kind of yeah. nice when they're, where they're both kind of priced in that ambiguous range of, we don't know which one of these guys is the guy because then you get the individual discount. They should be closer because we don't know. It's it's a very good point. I mean, like last year, all the other examples, we did have a strong inkling that Tyreek was over Waddle, that A.J. Brown was over Devonta, that whoever the third one, uh, Chase was over Higgins, right? And like the other guys were good, but they were not as good as the number one on those teams. You can at least make a case for Tank, but I think Nico's got to go higher. Yeah, it's really interesting thought experiment if if the injuries and the production was flipped. Oh, oh my God, they got a punt again. 
Man. Purdy just running, chucks it up into nowhereville, and then IU came in from the screen out of nowhere. That was a wild play. Yeah, people ask about Rice compared to Nico. I have Rice in the – I think I have Rice 19th right now in my rankings. So similar but a little higher. Like I have Nico in the early 20s and um, uh, Rice at 19. Yo, the Lions are about to go to the Super Bowl, you guys. This is wild. A Lions? Jeez. I mean, it's, it's early. They're punting down 21-7 and can't stop them. Like, my concern is they can't stop them. What the – what was that punt returner doing? Yeah, I feel like – Cody says Rice rankings feels very TBD depending on their offseason moves. I mean, Pacheco and Rice might have, specifically Pacheco, but have some of the most fragile ADPs probably right now. Yeah, Pacheco for sure. I think Rice, the thing about Rice is that um, he hasn't, if you look at like first three targets and stuff, he's never had a, he's not getting many of the first three targets at all. And he's earning a lot of targets on, when kind of Mahomes is like kind of looking around. Rice is used. I think kind of goes hand in hand with the shallow a dot too is like, he's that kind of underneath outlet for Mahomes, but I, he gets open. He knows where to be. And he's gotten more and more involved as, as the season has gone on. Obviously we've had the two week Kelsey resurgence here, but um, I think that it's like one of those things where rice actually has a little bit more upside than it might feel like, because if they just install him a little bit more in the actual play calling, then he could really, like, I, I think he could, he could take another step forward in terms of his target earning ability or what looks like target earning ability, because he's not, he's actually having to like straight up earn most of his targets. Do you guys have any good playoff uh, best ball sweats going? Yeah. So I have, I'll, I'll pull up what I'm looking at here. <clears throat> So Sorry, got, I'm looking at our NFC stuff right now. I've got this this team. I've got this team in second. This is in the big mitten. Nice. So this is second right now. Uh, I'm fading Gibbs, Kittle, and Jamo. Um, and I've got McCaffrey. And I'm behind by two points now. Ooh. So, yeah, so it's a little tough. Uh, Kittle needs 10 points. to. He needs to clear JMO to start counting. So I'm, I think I'm mostly just fading Gibbs right now. It's like Gibbs versus McCaffrey, basically, and, I, and I'm and i down two. Um, but he has a, he has another out. I have Juwan Jennings uh, as, as my other piece. But he'd have to, he'd have to clear Rasheed before counting. So, yeah. Um, that's one of my sweats. And then my other sweat is this. Uh, this is in the gauntlet. And I've got uh, – I'm in first right now. And I'm fading like a like a lion's onslaught. Yeah. So we'll Which see. Which doesn't feel great. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't feel great, yeah. But I've got McCaffrey <laughs> um, and Kittle. But yeah. Kittle, I think Kittle scores it. What? No, he needs to clear MVS, I guess. What do you? Do you only have two points. dead roster spots? The two Cowboys. Yeah, and, and thinking both. I just have nice. uh, Ferguson and Cooks, and then I have another one that's in third. I think. Let's see. Oh no, it's it moved up to second. So that's nice. Um, so then this one is. I have a few more dead roster spots. I've got Rico Dowdle, but this is a Chiefs Lions Super Bowl. So I've got Gibbs. I've got Amon oh, so You have you have outs to, uh, to either yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, I do. This is it, it's a it's my weakest of the teams because I'm missing Gallup, Ferguson, and Dowdle, but it's still pretty strong. Mahomes, Pacheco, Gibbs, Kelsey, Amon Ra, Laporta, uh, Justin Watson. So. Nice. That's in second, and I'm like six points down. 
My one good sweat is the in the big mitten two, the team I drafted with easy. <laughs> I thought we were going to have a relative cakewalk uh, to the finals and then a Kelsey uh, over rice guy who had half the live players than we did uh, is up on us by seven. And we, we have Kittle as our unique piece. So we need seven from Kittle uh, to be able to get there. So that feels like it's going to get pretty sweaty at this point. Yeah, it does. Just not really part of the what they're doing right now. No. Well, n- no one's a part of what they're doing because yeah. they're not doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> they should try doing stuff. Well, how CMC still is, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the only guy. He's yeah. got 10 carries and three catches. The rest of the team have... Two carries and four catches. The rest of the team has six touches total. It's crazy. This isn't great. And, I mean, the Lions are going to be pretty content to uh, run it down their throats. Yeah. Yep. Script's terrible for our uh, our underdog sweats. This is uh... – mm-hmm. I mean, I'm happy for the Lions. Got that going for us. I am too. Yeah. Especially now that I'm kind of a Lions history buff. David Montgomery is getting a lot of run in this game. I know. Throwing to him. He has 11 touches already. Who's the big guy that leaked out? Pete, apparently you're fifth in the quarterback sneak. Oh, yeah. Uh, Seventh. What do you think? What do you think the spread would open up at for Chiefs Lions and over under? Chiefs by six. Wow. I don't think it'd be that high. I don't either. No. I think it'd be because the Lions already beat. I think it'd be. I think it would be over three. I think you're right. I think it'd be three and a half. Yeah. That sounds right to me. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, maybe you're right. Which is, I mean, the difference between three and a half and five and a half is, you know, notoriously not that big. So. Yeah, everyone, ever the chat's all saying two and a half, four and a half, four. So I got a little spicy there. But and then over under, it would have to be less than this game, right? It's probably like forty eight or something. I don't that think it would come great. in at like higher than this one, which was what. Although, 51? in tracking the over unders for the Lions games the last few weeks, I think it's just the Lions are driving that because their D is so bad. Every one of their games goes so high scoring. If you go look at like their last however many games, they haven't held a team under 17 points since their bye in week nine. Who? And the Lions. And that's the the Broncos scored 17 against them. Every other team scored 20 plus, despite the fact that they're winning most of these games. Like it's kind of crazy. Like they win – while giving up 20 points every week, every single week, <laughs> like it's bonkers. You'd think at they some point it. they'd win a game where they held a team to seven points or something, you know, like those games happen too, but not for Detroit. <laughs> Even like the Bucks last week, it was 31, 23, the Rams the week before 24, 23. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe 48. I don't think it would get any lower than 48. Maybe, maybe still be in, at 50. Yeah, I could I could definitely see fifty. Pete, they want to know about. They're saying the AZ trip. My understanding is, was it Arizona? Did you go to Arizona? Yeah, Underdog is running back the content house in oh. Arizona because it was like super hard to get spaces in Vegas. Um, is it open to the public? Uh, I do not believe so. We're gonna be doing a few things. Like we're gonna go to the waste management. I think one day uh again but i don't believe there's any public events if there is i will i'll put it out on twitter nice <clears throat> so you guys are gonna watch the super bowl at the at the house yeah that's what we did that's what we've always done 
even when it's in the same city. So it's almost like for our purpose, oh, sure. it doesn't even matter that what it's city, uh, yeah. It's just like a weekend to get together. That makes sense. I think we're going to a Suns game on Thursday night too, which should be fun. Nice. That's cool. It is great. Like all of those, the teams that have lit up the Lions. I mean, Nick Mullins went nuke on this defense. What was it? Twice. And now Brock can't get going. It's like, what the fuck, man? Right. At home too. I know. Yeah, this is – oh, my God, third and 10, 12? You're going to – see, that's why you have Jameer Gibbs on the field. Third and 12 converts on a handoff that David Montgomery gained seven yards on. <laughs> they were waving the white flag on this one. This is crazy. I can't believe they just gave up a first down on a third and 12 draw play. Where, where are the Niners? That was a sick run. Yeah, he's so Gibbs is good, man. I think if if you guys think like Gibbs and Kyron are going to be kind of a choice in a lot of drafts next year, because I think I'm clicking Gibbs every single time. (laughs) Yeah, I would click Gibbs every time on that. I so I haven't seen any drafts yet. You guys talked about ADP. I was trying to go into Underdog to look at like. Uh, no, I don't think have any yet. they don't have any yet. He <coughs> okay. even posted his ranks, which I was kind of using like an ADP type mm-hmm. of um, type of check on where what I was thinking about. Um, <sighs> wow, the sack out of field goal range. But I do think like, and we'll see where the market comes in on this. But I think they're if Hayden's ranks are close to ADP, I think there'll be some pretty easy fades with some of the dustier running backs like Saquon and stuff if they're if those guys are anywhere near the second round there's um, just so much risk before yeah. free agency in the draft with those guys and i mean even if where where was Kyron? uh like one two turn oh god that's such an easy fit yeah I, i'm having a tough time with Kyron because i he would be more i mean he kind of checks like a lot of the fade boxes um he's he can return value on that but like he, he can to me, he definitely you can. Said, Earlier you said that there was so, someone else you mentioned was the most fragile ADP. Kyron, to me, has been the most fragile. They have to add running back depth. Like, this is not about whether they like Kyron or not. He did get hurt. He went on IR. They had to go sign Daryl Henderson and use Henderson and Royce Freeman. They're going to draft him, and they didn't like Zach Evans. Like, I don't think they're going to, like, spend a bunch of money on a big-name running back because they don't. They have, they have a lot of holes. They haven't had a lot of draft picks. But they're going to add – Oh, another running back this off season in some form. Yeah, I th- yeah. also think that the problem with Kyron, like when you want when you're drafting guys with a lot of draft capital, I think you want to think about like what kind of what your your outs are. If like, what if this dude, you know, is nursing an injury? How much does that hurt? Like if CMC is nursing an injury, and I know CMC is different, but like, yeah, we don't care that much because he he's so deadly as a receiver. He doesn't need every single snap. He probably gets every single snap when healthy, but he doesn't need it. And we have a large sample value. size of him not seeding. Third and 18. Right. The Niners are – their defense is playing like shit right Are now. you telling me they picked this up right now? They're, they're lining yes. up. Like, oh, my God. How? Wide open. Middle of the field. Auburn Ross St. Brown. Who the fuck are you guarding? <laughs> That's crazy. You know that's his re like you know that's the whole play. Yeah. That's that's their guy. <laughs> that's their fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. Third and eighteen. <laughs> why is he running in the middle of the field wide open? What are you doing? Well, and, wow. and that's why Gibbs is just such a nice click. Like when you think through the worst case scenario. I mean, we already basically saw the worst case scenario for him, which was being in like a dead even timeshare and losing goal line touches. <laughs> like that's right. we we've already seen the the worst we already lived one it. out for him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's not he, that bad of a run out. No. He did uh, benefit a little bit from Monty missing some time. That was when he had some of his biggest games. So you could say that, that if Monty stays healthy. Monty's still going to be there. He signed a multi-year deal, right? He's Monty's be there cover again. at this point, though. Monty's like. No, yes. Yeah, sure. They're not going to add anything to that backfield at all. They're not adding anything. 
and yeah. you know what you know you're you know he's better than the other guy. They know you know they're not going to add anybody. You know that specifically he's much better as a receiver. Um, you're you know you're going to have to deal with him getting sniped at the goal line still next year for a lot. But you also know that were Montgomery to miss any time, Gibbs is probably going to be projected as like the the running back two that week behind McCaffrey. Yeah. So it's just like it's a really it's that's to me like he's and he's, someone asked about them losing Ben Johnson. Yeah, that that's not great. Um, they're, but they're not going to lose it. There's only two openings left, and the Seahawks are reportedly really in on Mike McDonald. So then it just comes down to the Commanders. I mean, maybe they do lose him to the Commanders. Let's but. let's see they lo- let's say they do. Dan Campbell is an offensive head coach. I don't know if people realize that he's a tight end and came up under Sean Payton. Like he's not. I know he's a rah rah and everything, but he's not a defensive mind. He's an offensive guy. I yeah. think he's the guy who installed Ben Johnson. He gave up play calling duties to Ben Johnson. I think you know he's he's also been. I think one of the things that Dan Campbell's done well is empower other smart people. And you know, I I would I would hope that he would. I know you you know, really good offensive coordinators don't grow on trees, but I don't think that he's know, not going to bring in Arthur Smith. <laughs> he's not going to bring in Arthur Smith, and like I think Dan Campbell's fingerprints are on this offense to some degree. Like this isn't just the Ben Johnson show here even though losing yeah i definitely think would hard i love that take all that dude it's pretty crazy looking (laughs) like brock purdy passing yards has gone up 30 yards from where we took it at the start of the game which i I understand the script and stuff but that's still kind of wild to me with how poor he's looked he's not looked good but oh my oh my god Oh, it was Gibbs. I thought that was Amon Ra. Goff has a wide open Gibbs in the end zone and misses him. Well, this play is going to be less exciting than it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's the throw at? Wow. He the, wow. He Holy did this, God. and then they did a slow, they did a zoom in on his mouth, and he goes, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, dude. God, Amon Ross I mean, St. Brown is so good. Another third down conversion. I'm sorry. I'm ruining this for you. What are you going to say, Pete? Mon- Montgomery's <laughs> going over 91 rushing yards, right? He's at 60 right now. I don't know. It's still 30 yards and a half. I know you don't want to root for David Montgomery. Right. What's Gibbs' number at? <laughs> now, now you might get me excited. He's oh, same he's... thing, 30, 30 from where he's at right now. So they have a meet. Remember when I floated in the chat? Uh, any any Gibbs stuff you guys like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, should have went with Gibbs stuff. In, you in said different. Gibbs receiving, and he's got I one touch for four <laughs> yards. <laughs> he hasn't done anything through the air. No. He would have. Yeah. Hey, he would have golf hit him on that pass, huh? That's right. He would have. That would have been sick. Yes, I specifically would have taken us down the wrong path. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a bad overthrow! I can't believe. I mean, those third down conversions are so huge too for the competitiveness of this game, because the Niners could have got last drive here. And the Lions were able to navigate the clock perfectly to where, I mean, the Niners have have sort of used their timeouts to try to, to extend the clock, but this is it. This is the last drive because of those three third down conversions, two of which were longer than 10 yards. One was third and 18. One was it's third crazy. and 12 or whatever. I mean, like, what? <laughs> They're executing this perfectly. This drive is 15 plays, 65 yards to take the half out. I mean, that's – So who, this who got the ball to start? Huge. Lions did, but, I mean, okay. Niners needed something before half and after half. Now they're going to go down three scores, you know. That's nuts. If they could have held them to a long field goal try with two minutes left and gotten last drive, you have a different scenario going into the second half. But Lions are going to potentially put this game away.
I, I've taken, I've, I've gone away from the comments. I'm sitting here with Nick in the private chat, so this isn't spoiled for me. <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to go for this? I mean, I'm spoiling everything. I apologize. It, well, I, no, you didn't this time, though. What, do, you, do you think they're going for it? They still have golf on the field. Wow. I think they should kick this. You think that they Dan, should kick this even oh, though we have a Badgley the, under? Yeah. <laughs> Badgley under is about to die. They did just bring Badgley on, and it is about Damn to it. die. Wow. I thought Dan Campbell was a leader of men. <laughs> it actually probably makes sense to kick this field goal. Like if you're a 49ers fan, you're kind of hoping they go for it and you stop them, right? Like the field goal. You're not loving. I just can't get over a 16 play drive with multiple third down conversions longer than 10 yards to run the entire quarter out. Ends up being a 17 play drive with the field goal. What an incredible! I mean that that possession. Like you have a really good first half, but a lot of teams lose a little bit of that right before the break. That possession right there, that field goal possession, is fucking massive to their chance to actually win this game. They 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 are huge favorites now. I mean that was awesome. All right. Let's oh yeah. Redemption. Pick Build some up. shit. I want nothing to do with Brock Purdy higher than three hundred and seven passing yards. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you want to take the under? I don't want like, to double. I don't want yeah. to double down, and I don't want to go against our initial yeah. rooting entrance. But that's just too much. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't. I I like both of the Detroit rushing stuff. I mean, they're just running so well right now. Let me get a refresh on this. Gives the refresh. Oh, 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 they got a bunch of flags. Then, I mean, Ray McLeod got loose on the return. He was trying to run it back, but they, they, they got some holdings. It looked like he might have a chance to, to get a seam, and he ended up getting tripped up. But he got through the first couple waves of defenders. That would have been huge. It's all refreshing. What what do you what were you saying, Pete? What are you thinking? I like the Lions rushing stuff a lot. Uh both of them. I'm in. Uh, yeah, should, should I like we, both. I mean, should both we do are kind of interesting. We could do both. Should we do them together or should we do a, like a little build that we do both ways with Gibbs and with Monty? I mean, I think they're probably. I mean, they they kind they're of. They're probably playable together. Usage, they're kind of positively correlated. I almost feel like. Yeah. And then I'm fine playing Niners passing stuff through other ways than. Uh, than Purdy. Than Brock. I mean, like the 38 and a half for Kittle. Debo's at what right now? Once I can see it. Oh, here we go. All right, we're up again. So. Debo is the best he, number. 55. Yeah. He's 13 yards lower than Ayuk, but he's currently 10 yards higher than Ayuk. So they're putting him 23 yards less in terms of the, just the second half. Yeah, I like that. That's a good call. I mean, this as a core isn't bad. The Debo, Gibbs, Montgomery, they each just yeah. did 30. Let me lock this one in as a core. No correlation, Doc, because we're playing both running backs together. Yeah. But that does probably correlate to a degree. I mean, that's Lions in the game maintaining script, possession and, yeah, holding ball, yeah. all that stuff. Playing for my uh, What if we did one of, like, I do kind of like the idea of doing just, like, one of them with two Niners if the Niners have the ball a little bit more than the Lions do and both their yep. running backs can't hit that. Do So maybe just do a couple three-leg ones. Yeah, maybe like the Monty and Debo with like a McCaffrey TD or the Gibbs and Debo oh, wow. with a McCaffrey TD or something. I didn't think we used to get halftime spices. I don't think we did. Yeah, 1.25 on Kittle, Ayuk, and Debo. Hmm. 
Oh, that's interesting. I think I like the Debo spice the most because you can get some rushing equity, right? Yeah. What do you guys yeah. think? Just a just like a bummer. That. Then then you can't use his receiver. Yeah, <laughs> we can't use that. Jameson, one catch. Laporta, they're putting at he needs nineteen yards. The the one concern for the way the second half could go that I would have is that the Niners. That the Lions get a little bit overly conservative. The Niners actually yeah, get some that is, that the Niners, is their, Yeah. If the Niners could run a lot more plays than Detroit in the second half. That's if this game yeah. were to somehow get competitive again, right? Yeah. I mean, just taking CMC scrimmage yards is always uh, yeah, I, th- in I like play. it. He's he gonna needs, get plenty. He's gonna get plenty. He needs 59. Receiving. Well, both both are fine, but isn't that receiving number like the scrimmage yards they're gonna keep they're gonna keep running like that they don't have another gear that's the whole problem with the 49ers they have to keep doing their 49ers stuff for sure but that's why i kind of like having the out on the rushing too if he gets all 60 of those with the rushing plus receiving receiving you're telling me he's not getting 27 receiving yards to get those 60 i think he's getting more receiving than rushing probably right just like the based on the on the lines, I agree. I yeah, like I, I hear what you're saying out. for sure. It's just if they start to get so spooked by Purdy's play that they are just running it. A ton they just run it. it. Yeah, they just yeah. come out and they just run, 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 and they go. You know, and he could just hit for a long run too. Like he, he hits yep. for fifty yard runs sometimes. I mean, that could happen for sure. Yeah. I mean, and the way you know, I could definitely see the 49ers losing this game because they like, you know, they score. Yeah, you know, they, they almost tie it up, but they just run out of time because they just what, they kind of just do their thing. Both Gibbs and Monty need about thirty rushing yards. Gibbs actually wound up with two more carries than Monty in the first half. I think it's a little bit because of the two minute drill, and Monty does feel like the plus script guy. But oh, Gibbs only needs twenty five. Yeah, they just. I feel like that updated. Yeah, I think I like his more. They're still using Gibbs, and he can get an explosive run. What if we did uh, the Debo Spice, too, instead of the Debo? So the McCaffrey yards, Gibbs yards, and the Debo Spice as a three. Yeah. I like that. It's up to a seven. Look at that. Keep it. Oh, what do you got? Oh, did they pull the Spice? They pulled the Spice. Let me see. What? Spice is not nice. Damn, dude. Uh, dude, right before we could click it? They still have the Ayuk. The they Debo have Spice negative, got hammered. Negative Spice on, uh, <laughs> on the TMT. That's amazing. How, is it, how are you giving us negative Spice? How does that even work? That's amazing. So I just throw on Debo's receiving yards again? Or I don't know. I mean... Unless you guys want to try to get uh, go get the Ayuk TD spice. Look at that Amon Ross spice two two point two five. That seems crazy, right? That's a me- that's a mistake. I like that one. That one's fun. Yeah, I'm locking that in, guys. We're we're locking that. I, that has to be a mistake, right? I mean, I think they're thinking they're going to run so much they're leading. They might not score a lot of TDs, no, but- and if they do, they'll run it in. But I I agree. We want to play that at that price. We do. Yeah. And, we and the 2.25 is outrageous. Like yeah. 1.25 for Debo, Ayuk, and Kittle, and 2.25 for Amon Ra is nuts. Yep. I love it. it I, they, mean, I mean, Dan Campbell is smart enough. Obviously, they kicked the field goal there, which it seems like we all think was the right move. But like, they're not just going to completely go into a shell with this offense. Like, they're going to, no. they know no lead is safe against this no, team. No, we just, we just played that as like, it's a pretty back and forth second half. Both teams run yeah, a lot yeah. of plays. McCaffrey and Gibbs go over, and Amon Ross scores a TD. That's not hard. Lions never take the foot off the gas, which is very Lions. You know, yep. they sometimes get too conservative, but I feel like this is, could be a spot where they, where they don't, where they keep their foot on the gas. So I like that we have a couple different, different paths. In the second half. Sure, Steph. I'll drop this in the Discord. I'll be curious if that... (laughs) 
Yeah, it's still up. Kind of wanted. Do you guys want to do this with anything else? Diamond Raw. Did we have it with? Because we did it with the Gibbs. Do you guys want to do it with the Montgomery? Yeah. And let's do it with Montgomery. The Debo. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I just like yeah, think that number is so good. I yeah. love it. Yeah. This is our last one of the year. Let's fire. True. Yeah. Let it let, let it rip. Oh, they did put the Debo back up, but but for this one with the Amon Ra. What if I'm we just, just gonna... did both spices? Have to hit both touchdowns in the second half. If you want, you can do that for like fifty or. As a great um, man once said, "Live a little." <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sixteen point eight versus thirteen point five. Yeah, maybe we just here. This here, Look, here this... I'll split it because I was going to do a hundred yeah. anyway, so I'll just split it. I love it. I'm going to grab a little water, but I love that. All right. There we go. All right. Steady lads deploying more capital. We're deployed. Love it. Man, Chiefs Lions Super Bowl would just be so crazy. Mm. I know it really would be. I'm, I'm honestly, I have to say, as as much as I would love to see the Lions win the Super Bowl, them beating the Chiefs and then having to eat crow on on Liam calling the Lions a, a dynasty. Uh, <laughs> oh ago. my god I, I forgot about that angle it is funny all the different subplots with the the super fans in our orbit you do have to remember the chess liam dynasty call for the lions the uh, the, bears is, the bears one didn't age quite as well yeah <clears throat> we're going apple chasing again guys Ooh, chat. dude so so enjoy ben this. Gretch is about to fucking delete an apple. Guys. <laughs> Would hate to be an apple right about now. I bet the Niners are feeling like an apple at Ben Gretch's house. <laughs> Dan Campbell's biting kneecaps. Well, Ben Gretch is biting into apples. <laughs> He's already halfway through. <sighs> He does. He gets after an apple. Apple chasing. I told my wife about that. I was like, it was the weirdest thing. I don't know why. And she's like, let me see what you did. So I, I pulled up the video. She was really on chat side. She's like, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That's the worst, man. You just try to show your significant other something, get them on your side, and then they're on the chat side. They're on chat's team? What's up, wow. man? It's a tough look when, when she sides with the chat. Is your marriage over if she's Montgomery over Gibbs? That could be that could be trouble for you guys. She's like, that is pretty high yards per carry. <laughs> That's what we really need. I mean, now that underdogs into the you know ancillary you know numbers game because they had the Gill shootout. You know, we got to bet on. Peter Jennings and, and Jack Settlement in the shootout. I mean, who says no to kind of like a Kobayashi type hot dog eating contest with Gretch and a bushel of apples? Yeah, I was wondering why you were uh, so comfortable firing, but I forgot you won all that money betting against your buddies. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm rich in haterade over here. <laughs> that was pretty funny. The, uh, I watched the clip of them discussing Jennings' form before, <laughs> yeah, beforehand. Yeah, roasting it. Yeah. That was pretty good. That guy, the guy who won, it's funny because I had seen a video of him on TikTok like well before this contest was even announced. And he's like a dead, um, like his life is devoted to just shooting. Like I saw a tour of his house and he has like all these various hoops throughout his house, 
and he has his own like i think it's like a barn that he converted into a gym and he just shoots all day like his entire life is just shooting um he's who peter jennings wants to be when he grows up and uh <laughs> Yeah, so it it wasn't too it wasn't like quite this crazy underdog story to me in that like this guy's devoted his life into being a sharpshooter, but it is kind of cool because he has you know this weird form, uh, but man is he's devoted. I didn't I didn't actually see who won. So this so he's not he's not has he did he play basketball like at any at college or I, anything? I do not think so. He's like five nine and has a ponytail. Like he doesn't wow. look like a hooper. Yeah. And he, he does the like shoulder toss. Yeah. It's like, like a shot put. The, the, the shot put thing going on. Yeah. Wow. And he's in a shootout with Gilbert Arenas and all these guys and wins it. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I saw the guy like taking a few shots and I was like, it's like this is the winner. And I was like, weren't there N NBA players in that? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Hey, uh, what I thought, you, you know, maybe I'm not giving him enough credit because they did do you know, varying distances too. you know how they had like the long jumper, the college three, the NBA three or whatever. So that does take, you know, there are guys who probably just can drill, you know, college threes, you know, right. that's the, what they always practice on. And like going two steps forward is almost as hard as going two steps back. Like when you're used sure. to that memory right. on that. And it increases the, like the sample size. They had to shoot a lot of shots. Yeah. How did he win? I was <laughs> just like, that's amazing. Guys have got a good shot. I thought uh, there was a lot. I saw a lot of talk. The reason I got into this, I saw a lot of talk from our buddy Jennings and his gatherer with his Achilles tear and how he has to go right, left. And there was a lot of discussion on Twitter about it because they were kind of clowning on him on uh, like one of their podcasts because like it's an opposite way to do it. But he does it because of his Achilles right. tear. I thought though, because he looked wet, I thought he was gonna crush. He he ended up going under his number, right? When I saw yeah. he struggled. Bummer. Which I mean, I've I've watched him do shooting props before. Uh I mean he's he's very good. Uh yeah. but yeah, I mean I don't I, I I haven't actually heard what he said happened to him at the event, but it, it seemed like he had a pretty rough day. Mm. That's bummer. Yeah. And there's also the thing, not saying that like Jennings, you know, can't withstand the pressure, but there's also a pretty big difference when you are in a gym and there's cameras and NBA players and a crowd and it's being live streamed to 30,000 people, you know, watching live. I mean, it definitely ratchets up the amount of pressure. All right, can we get a can we get a fun game? Yeah. Oh, we got Greg Olson on this call. We're missing uh, a Greg Olson game. I am a fan of Greg Olson. I've had some people tell me they don't like him. Mm. I think he's good. There's the big announcer drama because he's the number one guy this year, and got kind of elevated to the number one at Fox when. Troy Aikman and uh, and Joe Buck went over to ESPN for Monday Night Football, but Tom Brady signed the huge contract with Fox, and it's yeah. like they're not going to pay him that kind of money to not have him be the number one Fox broadcast in the spot that that Aikman used to be in. But Olsen's been really good, and so it's like they didn't really – I think they anticipated Brady would be that next guy, but Olsen's been that guy, and Brady took this year off from, from – broad, he, didn't, he just took the year off from playing or broadcasting – but has this contract waiting for him. It's kind of fascinating. I thought that was such just a crazy <clears throat> leap. I, again, I, I'll set aside like what Brady does for ratings itself and him being a draw. I'm not going to argue that whatsoever, but just assuming that he will be uh, an entertaining and above average commentator. I mean, like that's, that's a leap. Like people don't realize, sure. Some people have, you know, an innate skill set for that. But then a lot of it is reps and practice. And I, I'm not convinced he could just walk in and be interesting immediately. Who, what oh, what pair is he going to be with? Well, that's, that's the other thing. It's like, talking about. Yeah. maybe he would take what, maybe he would be with Kevin Burkhardt, who's like earned the right to be the number one play by play guy. But like Olsen is, is oh, Olsen's awesome. Olsen's yeah. the best guy in the, 
in the game. Right That's now. what we we're talking about. Ooh, Debo already hit. <laughs> Let's go. All first, right. I mean, first, first pass or I don't know, second and two. They just went from the 33, 17, 20, about 25 yards. What did he need? Like 20, 30, maybe? 23? Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Let me look. He's up to 47. Did he need? Okay, so he's a little, 50? he needs a little more. Yeah, yeah he, he needs 50. to get to 56 and a half, but oh, okay. very good. Score. He needed 30. He was at 21 and needed to get. Okay. But still, he got about 25. Oh, and the second next pass goes to him too. All right, well, now he's there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love, uh. I love when we hit the stuff so right quick. away. Yeah, it was like so we were like that was our first thing we saw was the Debo yards. Well, we did the the Lions rushing the first thing on uh, the San Fran side. It's funny because the first one we grabbed it at, um, he's now hit because he's at fifty six. But the the second one or it ended up being the final one we did we we got it at fifty six and a half. So it no, no. Half. Oh, we, no. we need one more receiving yard oh, no. in that last one. But the thesis was sound. Oh, then they did a reverse to Debo. Is it rush yards plus receiving? Oh, he lost yards, so hopefully it's not. Dude, that's why kind of like the CMC Debo stuff, you know, it makes so much sense, right? Because it's like these guys can move the ball without asking Brock to do much, and we're terrified to have Brock, Brock drop back as right. fast as you can kittle right now. For sure. that was We talked about that a little bit, I think, before you got on, but like – we were talking about how the Lions are so bad in the in in the splash show, but it's like, will the Niners after last week trust Purdy to even throw in that area? And they they tried it a little bit, but I think partly, especially starting the second half year, they're like, no, we're done with that shit. Purdy's gonna, <laughs> Purdy's got a game manage. Oh, what the fuck was that play? I really wish I wasn't so far behind. I know. I it's now I'm starting to get tilted that I'm so far behind. Well, I'm not that far behind. I'm like 30 seconds. Oh, nice play. Are you guys both behind? I'll just stop. I'll just be at your guys' pace. No, I honestly don't mind the ambiguous spoils like you okay. just did. I like that. I don't mind that at all. Then I, it puts I your eyes to the to the game yeah, a little yeah. bit. What play were you reacting to when you said, what the fuck was that play? Jawan Jennings, Jawan Purdy Jennings. rolling left and throwing back over the middle, which I thought was like, that's going to get picked. And then Jawan Jennings making a one-handed catch. Like, that whole that whole thing <laughs> was very weird to me. We did one and a half catches for him. Are we still live on that one for Yeah, anything, or we... because it's the, the one that was dead – is, is with the, the Badgley CMC. was just the CMC point. So we need one more Jennings catch, and we need – I mean, we need a lot. Uh, but uh, we need Brock, uh, Ayuk, and then the CMC receiving. TD is the big spice on that one that we need. Oh, that's right. So that's the one with the CMC receiving TD. Got it. Yeah. So if we hit that, they don't even have Jennings on the field here. They got use check. What – dude, Brock Purdy – you can see that the game is moving too fast for him right now. Like that design was a, a use check motion. And I was like, is that play going to go to him in my head? They, he looks downfield and clearly is never going downfield. Does kind of a little shoulder pump and goes right to use check. And it's like, I'm only ever going to go there, but there's a defender there. And he just oh, sort of like yeah. floats it. Like it's a, it ends up being a throwaway, but that looked scary. Like it could have been a pick. Like a, he's done that before and left it on the field of play and it gets picked off. Ooh, next throw is just, oh man, Jennings is hurt. Next throw is just a crazy bad throw. He's not doing it. Oh, I forgot the, the Niners part. missed a field goal in the first half too. That, that was a bummer just for the competitiveness of this game. It would have been nice if they made that. What are you going to say? Just that I'm so far behind that you're actually breaking down what happened as I'm watching. <laughs> you're like, here's the thing. So use check to you're gonna see use check go in motion. I'm like, I am seeing that. <laughs> and then use check is gonna come back around. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Man. I mean, I, I think I should just pause it and be on where you guys are at. I'll just not pay attention to the chat either. Let's see. 
All right, I just hit play. Pause I just thought you'll go go seconds. through. I'm still ahead of you. Pete, where are you at? Uh, I just saw the field go to. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to pause it. I'm already on the first commercial. Tell me when you get on the first commercial. No. No, yep. Pat and I are the exact same. All right, I'm where you guys are now. Um, Man, Jake Moody field goals. Do you know what I'm kind of surprised on despite – you know, I, I in my head that they the Lions have been running a ton and Goff's already at twenty pass attempts. We had that at thirty five and a half. Yeah, that is interesting. I thought I was gonna look and it was gonna be like sixteen. But he's on a on a good pace to get there. I mean I can't believe I'm glad they got points and it's 14 now, but they have to get a stop now. They, they had to settle for a field goal there. Yeah. Not great, Bob. You get a big play, you want to go get the TD, but you got Purdy just like can't do anything. Man, Chiefs line Super Bowl would be so wild. It is crazy because the discussion on Purdy all year was about you know MVP, but then also about is he a system quarterback or does he add to the system? And a lot of people have been like, you have to give him credit for adding to the system. He's not just a system quarterback; he's more than everyone else. And that's I think true. I'm not I'm not like I'm doing a little voice there. I'm not trying to like uh, mock that too too much. Alex Smith just said it this week. He he had a funny comment where he said. Uh, Schefter tweeted it out that Alex Smith called himself the president of the um, system quarterback club or whatever. He's like, as the honorary president, I'm <laughs> Brock Purdy is not a system quarterback. But yeah, so the chat's getting to where I'm going. Like, I'm starting to wonder if he's not the guy, right? Like, he was the seventh round pick. You haven't given him a big contract or anything. At what point are we talking about him not actually even like being the guy all next season? Like, how long is the leash? What if he struggles into next year? I, I mean, I think that's that's he, jumping. He was, he was number one in EPA per play and success rate by like a, a lot. By I a think lot. they're not going to bench him. I think if to no. to Gretch's point, it would be a very fascinating discussion if they had like somehow a top five pick in this draft. Yeah, you know, or if he was. Two years because he's in his second year. So if he was, if this was two years from now, um, then I think it's a lot more interesting because it's like, oh my god, we have to give this guy a contract. But they don't. They're just gonna run it back. What about what if like something comes up with that elbow? Like, so he had a partially torn UCL and then he played through it. Maybe he's had some late season fatigue in his elbow. Is that part of this? Like, he's awesome. looked terrible the last two games. The like, last two games looked really bad. Yeah. He's missed a lot of throws. Like, I'm wondering if he has an arm issue right now. Like, that's how bad – that throw to Jawan Jennings over the middle just now was, like, nowhere near where it needed to be. Yeah, chat's actually making an interesting point that maybe Sam Darnold gives him a better chance to come back and win in this game. Like, that would – Sam Darnold would have to play well. I don't know – that I think, I think Sam Darnold would be a disaster compared to Purdy, to be it honest. It might be a disaster. Yeah. I think we've all rehabbed to see Sam Darnold a little bit too much. Well, I, I think the way he's, you know, if you had like two pick sixes or something, but the fact that it's just been missing throws, like his leash is still very long right now. Yeah, it is. The yeah. team all really rallies around him. They like him. I don't think you can bench him, but – but it's I, an interesting point, conversation, at least, about who actually gives him a better chance to win. Well, especially if, if you're on the sidelines for the Niners and you're saying, okay, our defense cannot stop shit right now. At some point, we're going to have to air it out. We're going to have to make some big plays. Like, Brock is going to have to make some throws. Right. And he's not. Like, the reason they had to kick a field goal on that drive when they already had a big hit is, I mean, on third – Third and eight, he can't even get anywhere near. Juwan Jennings is relatively open on that play, and he can't even get anywhere near him. I, th I mean, the thing is, 
Purdy, I mean, Purdy is he is a system quarterback, but I think he's a pretty good system quarterback. And his the thing is, like, he's on a seventh round rookie deal. So, like, like yeah, he's not gonna do every like if you if the game script gets away from him, you're kind of screwed. But this team's supposed to have an awesome defense, and they, they're just letting the Lions carve him up. Like you will. This is the, the formula that the 49ers have access to is one where they are elite everywhere else except quarterback, and they're pretty good at quarterback because Purdy's just outplaying his contract by a shit ton. But they kind of have to hold up their end on that, and it's like you're – yes, Purdy will not win these games for you. Like the, he just won't do that. But you got to have to pay for a guy who can. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and pay for it not just in money but, but draft capital – probably being bad to get the draft capital in the first place. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not like a pretty defender. I don't think, but you know, he's, I think he's pretty good for, he's incredible for what you're paying. And then you have to use uh, the extra, you know, money that he opens up to cover up his, his real weaknesses. Dude, the Lions are just resetting the offensive line every play on this drive. Like, David yeah. Montgomery, six yards, seven yards, five yards, and all of it is, like, yards before contact. <laughs> Montgomery's 12, 12 yards away from clearing his second-half number. He's at 78 rushing yards. We got it at 90.5. Pat, I did agree with your take. I, I uh, kind of feel stupid for even suggesting benching him. I think you have to play. <coughs> play pretty. It's just, man, he has missed – throws in this game and last week it was bizarre too and he had that game late in the regular season he's been really bad suddenly yeah yeah he's been bad the last few weeks yeah wow you, you you like at this point you have to treat him like he's like Mahomes or like you know an Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady like you would just never bench this person like that's this is you know this is the way that you win is he figures it out not by replacing him man that's a sick Laporta TD if Goff hits him in stride. Yeah, he had him. It's a tough throw, but man. Should they bench Jared Goff? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't even know. Who, who, who is the, who's the backup Lions QB? I have no idea. No idea. I don't think we've – have we seen him in a hall this year? Is it David Blau still? Oh. <laughs> Remember that, dude? I do. No, it's Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, I just thought of it wow. as I was clicking it up. Wow. Yeah, they have Play Teddy a ring. That'd be fun. He in the I will preseason say for like, he was rocking number fifty-five. <laughs> it's like can't be a quarterback and rock fifty-five or number fifty or something. The Chiefs Lions is also the most fun for you know like showdown drafts, even pick 'em stuff, just because they go so deep with like random yeah. wide receivers. You probably get Khalif Raymond back for the Super Bowl. That makes that, you know, little trio with Reynolds and JMO even more interesting. Yeah. They just got really cute there and put Amon on the backfield, but did a draw right up the middle. They're going to go for this. Luckily, though. our spice yeah. involves both rushing and receiving TDs for Amon Ra. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was a total four down territory call on third and five because they were, they were going to cut it to fourth and short. I, I feel like this is almost a must-have stop for the Niners, man. They can't. They haven't stopped the Lions. They have to get a turnover on. They have to. They have to. Yeah. Because if they even a what field goal on this team? drive is really damaging. Incomplete. Oh, they got it. Oh, All wow. right. Good. At least we have a little bit of a sweat and a little fun in this game. Although, it would be fun to see the Lions win this. Oh, yeah, Josh I, Reynolds just drops it. it. Goff, wow. Goff avoided pressure, stepped up in the pocket. That was a great a throw. Nice play. Yeah. That's like kind of what Goff's not supposed to be able to do all that well, and he did it. Yeah. Threw it away from the defender in a spot where his receiver can make a play. And it just bounced off his fucking arm. <laughs> Catch the ball. You're an NFL wide receiver. It, it never ceases to amaze me. Like. I don't know. Some of the like some NFL receivers like don't seem to have ball skills. Not that this is true about Josh Reynolds, but it's like they have really good athleticism and they've been a wide receiver their whole life. But they just like don't. It's like, did you ever have you ever caught a football before? <laughs> have you ever played catch? Like, uh, yeah, Kadarius Tony. I think uh, <laughs> Kadarius Tony fits that. It's like, why are you trying to catch like this? What are you doing? <laughs> 
I know that seems weird, and I know a lot of people be like, well, you know, what are you talking about? But I mean, I honestly think there are NFL receivers that don't have really good hand eye coordination. Some of them, Quentin Johnston, <laughs> that cuts, but it's true. It's not it's pretty crazy. For how well he calls up with four examples. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's very funny. It's good. The, uh, it's pretty wild that how well the Lions are playing, and Goff only has 6.6 .6 fantasy points. He just has the 167 passing yards. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're so effective running the ball right now that they've really gone away from the pass for a while. They have more rushes and pass attempts right now. I mean, a lot of teams that win by two touchdowns wind up there because they run a lot late. But, I mean, we're still very much in the flow of the game, and they have more rush attempts than pass attempts. Mm That was an interesting decision. I mean, I get it going for it there, but a 45-yard field goal to push it to three scores? Yeah, the three-score thing. Look at us before the game or during the at the beginning celebrating Dan Campbell being our yeah. aggressive king, and then he goes for it and like, should have taken the points, bud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think going for it makes sense, and then, you know, you're – your receiver lets you down. I mean, the quarterback steps up, like the play, like this is the 49ers. Like you need to, you need to put a, a Debo through their heart. They'll get you, man. Debo is so yeah, he, fun with the ball in his hands, man. He's I'm telling you, it's that thing. He's like, if I just let Brock Purdy throw the ball at the line of scrimmage where there's no defenders around, how long can we get away with this? But there's a lot of dudes that, for sure. But there, there's a separate point. I was <laughs> building on that. There's a lot of dudes that are good after the catch. Debo is just like – it's weird how how much better he is than every other wide receiver. Like at, at like Yak. Like he's yeah, untackleable. Is. How is he so hard to tackle? <laughs> he's like the most untackleable player. He looks so player. different when he runs. Like he's yeah. got such a different like kind of – I mean he doesn't even really look like a running back. When he runs, no. he looks, he just looks different. <laughs> he just looks like you're not going to be able to tackle him. It's like, yeah. he's going to, he's like a, like a wrestler, like a, not, not like a WWF wrestler, like a high school wrestler. Like he's so thick and sturdy. He looks like a dude that could, I mean, but he's just like, you're not, I have such good balance. I'm so yeah, like, crazy good balance. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I'm going to bounce off everything. Yeah. And then I'm yeah. going to accelerate. I'm going to bounce off yeah. and accelerate. And like, yeah. Wild. The Marshawn Lynch of wide receivers is a fun one. I was just thinking of Maurice Jones drew in my head, like this little bowling ball that used to, you know, also have the acceleration. Guys, I think That's we have something big coming up here. The chat's going nuts. I, oh! I the, I'm not looking at the chat right oh! now. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> oh, get in. What's the flag? What's the flag? I don't know. DPI? I can't believe that. Purdy hits the defender. We got a game if that's live. Holy shit. Hits the defender in the face mask, and IU makes the play. <laughs> oh, my God. Did they, did I'm the, behind was line. What is down? the flag? No flag. They're saying no flag. He was touched down, no flag. He touched down. Right. Wow. So he's touched in the air, but not after he lands. That's a touchdown, right? There's no... No, if he's going to the ground and touched, and yeah. he has possession, it doesn't matter that he didn't have possession yet. If he's like, he actually is touched with possession. It looks he's like he's touched with possession on the way to the ground. Like he's down. I think his thigh pad got touched there on that last angle that I I just saw. I don't know what angle you guys are on. <laughs> wow, they are looking at that. It looks like his thigh pad. Yeah, now they're doing a slow mo on the thigh pad. Yeah, so he definitely yards, was tough. Uh, Ayuk up to 62 um, with 77 and a half was the number we had. And then Brock's up to 204. Can we get a CMC passing TD? 
They gave him a TD on the stats. I don't know if anyone else just noticed this, but they had they have one passing TD for Purdy right now, and they had a TD on Ayuk for a catch. That hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> CMC has a rushing TD. That's all we have. That hasn't happened. <laughs> Rock Purdy is not throwing to, uh, touchdown in this up. game. I don't think we'll need to Look wait till uh, Wednesday for that stat correction. Man, there's been some wild plays today. The Lamar Ooh. throw to himself. What was that? What? It... Was that you? Was that just a bad throw? Because it looked like you had the slam on that. It's hard to watch on a on a phone. When I'm used to watching it on like a 55 inch screen, and I can actually see what's happening. <laughs> like I know. They didn't show a replay. Usually, I you know we, we need to catch a replay on the phone. It looked like he had the inside leverage on that slant, and it was just a bad throw. But I can't really see the freaking ball. Are you? Oh, Tutty! Wow, let's go. All right, we got a game again. Did he, I'm, I'm kind of trying to read through the chat with my little comments about the slant because it sounds like you guys didn't see it. Did anybody in the chat see that slant that I'm talking about on second down there? Like, was that just a missed throw from Purdy? I'm actually like legit curious about what happened on that play. I didn't see the replay on it. But they didn't show Let's a replay. Back and watch it. Oh, that's a good call. It was second and eight. It looked like he had <sighs> from the, the goal line play, you're saying, right? Yeah, the one the play immediately preceding the touchdown. They're saying bad throw on the chant. He was wide open. Agreed. Okay. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I couldn't see where the ball went. I'm gonna go back to that's a great call. I think it might have been tipped. Okay. Everyone, like, stop playing the ball. That would make sense if it got tipped. Yeah, there's a defender right at the line who jumps up right as it's thrown, and then it's kind of hard, and then the ball doesn't seem to go where you would expect. All right. Well, that – I mean, who knows how that drive ends if we don't get that that bounce. But, man. I got Birdie throwing it off the guy's face. <laughs> It's pretty wild that we are in a seven-point game with a lot of time in the third quarter it's right nuts. now. I mean, the Lions it feels were... like they have just thoroughly outplayed them. Yep. There's a lot of uh, people on chat saying they should have kicked a field goal. Yeah, I, I don't agree. They, they, that's like they not only. Do I like the aggression? But they basically, you know, they had it. The guy dropped. Yeah, it was, it was fourth and two. They, their decision on third and five was a run inside to set up the fourth and two. I don't love the play calls. You have third and five, and you give an inside handoff to Amon Ross St. Brown yeah, out of the backfield, like and then you throw to Josh Reynolds on fourth and two. And when you've been pushing the line of scrimmage every run. I mean, I, how do you not give a run to one of your two running backs on either of those plays? They've been averaging like five yards before contact every carry. I would have ran it on fourth and two to David Montgomery even. Yep. David Montgomery. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, my God. Ian Harditz with the funniest tweet. He, he did the, the all caps and lowercase up down like SpongeBob thing. He wrote, Brock Birdie is just a game manager on that deep pass to, to Brandon Hayuk off the footy fence. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Brock Birdie completes a 50-yarder. I said we were due for a splash play to Brandon Ayuk. Um, I'll take the That's suck the out. That's the splash zone. The thesis. The thesis. 
I said they were weak in spots, but I didn't say specifically how. <laughs> but the defender let it bounce off his face mask. He's, they're not good in this last show. Is that good defense? Is that yeah, good defense? That's, that's not good defense. <laughs> Ben, are you now ahead of us again, or are you synced up? I might still be. I might be ahead of you guys. That was a more fun drive. Uh, I'm right. seeing a big score bug and then kickoff right now. Am I behind you? I think you're behind. Yeah, us. I'm about I just... to watch the Lions' first play. They just oh, the Lions hand off to Gibbs. Gibbs fumbles. What? Holy shit! Yeah, he just holy fumbled. shit. Dare I say this? Well. Flipped on its head. No way. Holy wow. Look at Dan Campbell's face. Oh, dude, he has the wrong elbow up there. He thought the handoff was coming on the other side. He never has his ball. You're supposed to have elbow up on the quarterback side. He had the left elbow up, and the ball didn't have the ball, though. He, he, he no, no, he has it. it. Well, you're, you're right. You're right. But he then did tuck it away. And then I don't know if he was sort of I, discombobulated, but. Right, I don't think it was ever really. I don't think it was ever really tucked. The reason you do that is then you you roll your arm over it and you have it in your pocket. You know, yeah. The way that he did it, he never has it in his arm tucked the right way. It's like, yeah, that was weird because he knew he was on the left side of golf. I have no idea why his left elbow was up. That was this is crazy. It was 24 to 7 like 2 minutes ago. Nuts. Truly. It was 24 to 7 with 11 minutes in the third. There's 5 minutes now and the Niners are about to tie. Like 6 minutes of game time later. Dude, live line on scores. this game is Niners minus 3 and a half. Wow. Wow. I think Purdy heard your comments, dude. Bulletin board material. Yeah. That's right. He got Jameer Gibbs to fumble. Oh, Purdy's <laughs> running. Look at Purdy trying to be Debo. <laughs> he ran wow. right into Debo. He ran right into him. I'm you. <laughs> and he bounced off. Everyone bounces off Debo. That dude's... <laughs> he lost three yards because he ran into Debo. <laughs> he had a TD if he doesn't hit Debo. <laughs> Donk. <laughs> he just bounces off Debo. That's great. Oh, Debo. Run play. Get there. Oh! Are, am I ahead of you guys? You're still yeah. way, you're way ahead of me now. Oh, damn. I, I think just I'm saw the play. You're like 10 seconds ahead of me now. Okay. Yeah, me too. All right, I just paused it and re-snapped it. I'm watching Debo walk off the field. Me too. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, man. What a turn of events. That was almost our spice. Oh, yeah, I forgot the Debo spice. Caffrey, God. God damn it, these rushing TDs. <laughs> And we don't and even have his fantasy team. points live because of the Badgley thing. Yeah, we just have the one CMC thing we have live other than the receiving TD spice is we have his 125 total scrimmage yards. Man, all tied up here in a sec. Crazy. I mean, I was talking about on their first drive of the second half, why were they settling for a field goal to just cut it to 14? Like they needed the TD. They got the stop because the Lions didn't kick the field goal. They got the turnover on downs. And even on the turnover on downs, I was like, if they don't get this, this could be like, it feels like game. They get that turnover on downs, score a quick TD off an IU face mask play, get a fumble, and score another quick TD. Like, what the fuck just happened? That was, I mean, that's why football is crazy. That was wild. The 
Turnover on downs, Ayuk face mask play, Gibbs fumble, touchdown, second touchdown sequence. <laughs> that was nuts. That was nuts. That turnover on downs was, was with seven minutes and three seconds in the third. Or that was when it was snapped, 658. There is three minutes left in the third now. Four minutes of game time, they got that turnover on downs and scored two touchdowns. Yeah. With like a clock, third third quarter game time. Like they run a lot of clock in the third quarter. It doesn't stop as much. Ten plays. Ten total plays have happened. That was wild. Well, this is going to be a fun, fun rest of the way. It will. Yeah. I will say, like, I, I was definitely on the team. I mean, not that he's done a ton, but he's, like, played solid. But, I mean, Goff is definitely not melting on the road here. No. The whole road Goff, outdoors, tough defense, it's like. No, it's a it Reynolds drop and, uh, yeah. and the Gibbs fumble. Yep. Yeah, that was man, that was a nice throw to Reynolds. It was. I guess now now it'll be interesting if uh I, I assume we're gonna see a, a lot of David Montgomery on this drive. I think so. I think so. I think that's a <laughs> Montgomery drive. <laughs> yeah that's what barnwell just tweeted out dan campbell going forward on fourth down on a play where the lions got a receiver open did not cause a pass to bounce off of uh kendall vildor's helmet or jameer gibbs to fumble <laughs> seems like an important thing to remember That's a good that's a good take. Is that really the guy's name? Kindle Vildor? The funny thing about that is that it almost shows you why going for it was a good idea because things can change in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah, you know? getting that that those seven points there would have been pretty nice right about now. That's a fair point. But then I think the counter the counter argument is also somewhat valid where they're saying you got to push it to three scores because, I mean, people love – Does anyone really the, care if they're up 27-24 right now? It still I feels think they do. Yeah, maybe. We talk a lot about momentum not being real. I think the team cares if they still have a three-point lead at this point, and they can be like, all right, we get a buckle down. We still have a little bit of our lead left. Like at this point, you're like we're back to 0-0. Zero, zero. That fumble feels way more damaging if you're now tied as opposed to still on, you know, in a position where you can yeah, tell yourself maybe. you're leading. You can tell yourself whatever you want, but if you're up 27 24, you're still losing. <laughs> you're yeah. in basically the same spot. Right. I think, you know, he played, he tried to put the knife in the heart and yeah. uh, they slipped out of his hand. I don't. Yeah, it's it certainly shouldn't be heavily criticized. There's an interesting discussion about which of the two options was best, but it shouldn't be heavily criticized. Sure. Wow, that was a sweet what a catch, catch man! That was a pro. sick play. Laporta is the corner incomplete. What did so, did we miss him? Ball got jarred out there. Oh wow! Uh oh. That's a good Oh, I completely play. missed that because he was shielding us in the yeah, other direction. Too. He hit the ball, hit his hands, and it looked like he was going to bring it in, but that defender came swiping in. Nice play. Yeah. I wouldn't call that wow. a drop. Chat's calling that a drop. I wouldn't call it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's called a drop. Breakup. That's, breakup. That's, a, that's a pass breakup. Exactly. Yeah. He can't see the defender, and he had his hands on the ball and caught it, and the defender. Oh, that's a drop. Him. That's, That's a drop. Holy cow. Dude, get Reynolds out of it. Dude. He's blowing it. Wow. 
the that Lions pull so this bad. off, we're going to be talking about Khalif Raymond a lot for two oh, weeks after these God. drops. Jeez. That is so bad. Man, he is really hurting them right now. On the struggle bus. Goff is dealing, man. Yeah, Goff's playing awesome. What a boot. Come on, don't blow this. They just blew it. God, they're just every the execution is they're screwing everything up. Touchback. Come on. Why are you being such an asshole? He just... I both hate. of them were in. Both of them were in. I hate punt gutters. I have like an irrational hatred of punt gutters on those plays. Like they always want to be the guy to touch the ball and stuff. Like sometimes it doesn't even need to be touched, and then it winds up being a touchback just because they like want to do something. And it's like just fucking leave the ball there. Like don't touch it. Like what are you doing? That one, I mean, it wasn't really their fault. He had but, to touch it, but it, but he yeah. touched it very badly. <laughs> There's a lot of plays where I'm like, how is this what they're coached? How? What does he think he's doing? What is happening? Like, this, this could have happened better than this. So bad. Some special teams coordinator somewhere is like, that's the next market inefficiency in the NFL. Downing punts. Effectively, there's like plays where they're holding it when they're obviously going the end zone, and they, they wait till the last second because they're like trying to stay in, and then they like try to throw it out. And it's like the goal is just to make the ball stop, you catch it, and put it on the ground yeah. immediately. Right. I mean, you and, don't and have to here's an idea don't catch it when you're in the end zone, <laughs> <laughs> don't touch the ball when you're in the end zone. I gotta use the bathroom. Let's see here. How many attempts is Goff up to? He's up to 26. I, I feel pretty good about that one at this point. Yeah, why don't you pull up our core and yeah. what we're here for here? So we did we get Ayuka or we still need more? Oops. Let me get my screen here. Where am I? Um, so we need more from Ayuk. We need 10 more yards. We need uh 70 more Brock passing yards. And we need 10 more Jared Goff uh, attempts. I actually feel pretty good about the core. Me too. Um, and then, man, that CMC. So we need one more Juwan and then the CMC receiving TD. The fact that we have two <laughs> CMC tutties without one of them being receiving just really stinks. I know. I know. I, we are on off and on the clock. On Friday, we built a fun bomb here, a uh, spice bomb. Gibbs rushing Justice Hill higher than two and a half receptions already hit. And then it has Goff over 260 passing yards. Feel like he should get there. And then it's CMC receiving TD, same as us. And then the Laporta rush okay. receiving TD. And this is like a total bomb here. Um, what, what is it? What's 10K. the. Yeah, it was, 10K, I, it was 100X. Wow. Yeah, like five picks for, for almost 10K. Um, but yeah, I, I feel good. Ooh, about Kyle, oh, juice, juice check. check. Juice check. <laughs> what a play. How many fullbacks this... in the league not only have the hands to make that catch, but just kind of the the awareness oh, yeah. to toe tap the ability, that. and the ability to toe tap that? Holy shit. That's a difficult toe tap. I mean, I think the answer is zero. Like that's <laughs> he's like a Patrick tight end. Card ain't doing that I'll <laughs> yeah, tell you right no. now. He's the only guy, and he, I mean, it's because he's like that hybrid H back tight end type. That, right. Ooh. The true fullbacks are not doing that. This is nuck and futz at this point. This game. <laughs> it sure is. I mean, people are talking about like like the 49ers just just like stepped up in the second half. I'm seeing some takes like that. And it's like 
like Bleacher Report tweeted that uh, meme where the the guy's sitting back playing the video games and then he sits up. You know, it's like 49ers in the second half. They sat up. It's like no, no, no. The 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 Lions got him off the face mask and then fumbled. <laughs> like those are the those are the key. The Lions, so the Lions sat back. <laughs> Yeah, they sat back. Exactly. <laughs> Man, I can't believe we're already in the fourth quarter. I don't know if you guys saw Murphy came came in from that door there, so I went and closed the door, and then he just busted open this door here. He's just, he's just <laughs> yeah. in, I saw the door open, access. but I didn't see Murphy, so I was in full ghost mode. <laughs> no, Murphy enjoys just kind of busting. He hates when I have the doors closed to my office, so he just – Usually just opens them up. It's like these, these should be open. <laughs> My cat does that. Not not the same thing, but she just fucking claws at the door. And at nighttime, when I'm trying to sleep, and it's just paws on the door. So then I open it, and then she'll wake me up at one a.m. walking around on the freaking headboard. Oh God, don't be a, How old a is the cat, cat now. She's a. We found her as a stray in early January. She was, they said, a, probably about six weeks old. Um, so late November was uh, our guesstimate. So she's 14 months old. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Still, still kind of little. Still got that kitten in her energy. But yes. definitely bigger, yeah. Where did you find her as a stray? In our backyard. Wow. She came came like under our fence, and the street behind our house is like it's not like a it's like a neighboring house. It's a street, and uh, we have strays in our neighborhood. And she was so tiny. She was like six weeks for kittens is still like, like the, at the vet, they were like, we usually don't have people bringing strays this small. Like we don't really know what happened. My wife found a box on the other side of the fence. So like our one, one of our hypotheses is like, she was literally dropped in, like dropped off in a box basically like left, which is kind of weird. Wow. Um, but the other strays in the neighborhood, like we don't know who else could have had her because the, there was one other one that was pregnant at the time, but she couldn't have done it. The others are like male. One of them spayed. It's like maybe not a stray, obviously, like it's somebody's outdoor cat or something that's like always in our yard. It's kind of weird. But we took her in. We she didn't have a like a chip or anything. We tried to like find like we didn't hear anything, so we ended up keeping her. So. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get let's win some pickums. I believe. <laughs> I believe what we want is a big. Purdy drive with lots of IU capped off with a CMC receiving TD. I believe that's where our interests are. Let's do it. All right. I like that. That sounds right. We honestly don't even need that much IU. Just 10 yards. Kittle finally does something. There's Thank a big you, Kittle George. play. It helps the <clears throat> Purdy numbers. Yeah, I, Purdy I mean, two forty-five. <clears throat> it's super cliche to be like, "Oh, he's a safety blanket," but like Brock Purdy actually looks good when he's throwing the ball to George Kittle, and he looks bad when he's throwing to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> like, that looked like a really good throw. Like, just keep throwing to that guy. I mean, we don't even have any Kittle, but it's weird that they haven't used him at all. You know. Like, mm -hmm. really yeah. last week. 
Last week he was like their main uh their main guy, right? He had a better better game than IU last week, right? Yeah. yeah. I think he had more yards, right? Yeah. He so. was he had he had four catches for 81 <laughs> and IU had three for 32 and Kittle had the TD. So I just yeah, I mean I thought that was gonna carry over into this game a little bit. This is a tense ass game. Like it is. Just, you got oh, they just burnt a timeout. You can't just waste timeouts in a 24-24 game. Yeah, he's never played Madden, dude. That's that's the <laughs> that's that's the deal. That's the deal. It's so Everything about that quarter was bizarre. I can't believe giving up a timeout there. Wow. Purdy's got uh, some rushing ability all of a sudden. He doesn't look bad as a runner. He doesn't. That's pretty good in the pocket. Yeah. A little sidestep. All right, this this feels like where we could get the McCaffrey touchdown, huh? Yeah? It'd sure be nice. Okay. That helps us, I think. Yeah. Looking at a McCaffrey screen maybe on the next play. I feel like Shanny's just like licking his chops to fucking roll out Moody. <laughs> Second down. <Jesus. laughs> he started thinking about the field goal. <laughs> it's both Moody and Kyle Shanahan on the side saying, hold me back, trying to run. Yeah, yeah they're Kyle both getting up. held back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CMC split. No, no. What Dude, is this? Purdy. Shannon just calling. He's like, no protection play, so we can get Moody out there. Man, what is that? that that's different. literally, it's saying it's Jake Moody. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the thing is, after you already take the two sacks, a Packers. third sack isn't that big of a deal because they wouldn't have gotten out of field goal range. They were mm -hmm. in that sweet spot where, like, even if you lose another seven or eight yards, you can still kick a field goal. But they did what, like, reactionary thing was like, well, we're not going to take another sack, so we're going to call a little quick drag and throw over the middle, get the ball out, get a completion. You have to, I think, try to throw for the sticks on that play is what I'm saying because the risk of yeah. a sack isn't that huge. And that that's where I do think that Purdy kind of is a system quarterback where, like, they're not even going to try those types of plays. Yeah, they're just like, we're not going to let him get hit again and something bad happened, yeah. so we'll just take yeah. our eight yards and kick a field goal. Right. But I mean, the, they just made a 33 yarder. It would have been a 41 yarder. Worst case scenario, he takes a third straight sack. It's a 48 yarder or whatever. That's not likely. I, I think you still need to try a play down the field, is my point. Right. 
I agree. And and certainly if you kick it from 41, you expect to make it. You can't, you know, you, you didn't need to make that into a 33 yarder. Like it wasn't like you needed to get into field goal range. I retweeted Bardwell and some of the comments are like that it may have contributed to that and that it gave the 49ers hope and made the pressure build. And it's like, no, man, like you can say that in hindsight after you know all this stuff, but no, that's not what happened. Like most fourth down, like that's not what caused the ball off the face mask. That's not what caused the fumble. Like, <laughs> And also like imagine how gut-wrenching it would be for them to have converted on the play when they very much should have converted. They outplayed right. the 49ers on that play, and then they have a guy drop the ball. Like, right. It's just hindsight. It's, just hindsight. it's all hindsight. It's trying to uh, attribute an explanation to a wild sequence of mostly uncorrelated events and being like, well, it's probably the fourth down conversion that caused all this to fall apart. And it's like, no. Like, the ball hit off the guy's face mask. It was unlucky. And then Gibbs fumbled. That's unlucky. I mean, they, like, yeah. The fourth fortunate. down conversion is a recognition of the fact that the lead wasn't safe. Because it wasn't, right. and so that, I think all of this, in my mind, just makes me feel like it was a, a better decision. There's a lot of times on on fourth failed fourth down conversions where the defense gets a stop, and people are like, you know, the 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 coach showed that aggressiveness, and the defense was like, we got to do our job, you know, like we got to we got to step up. Yeah, to it's that. just narrative building. It has nothing it's to do with it. Building. Yeah. Yeah. The defense didn't go out there and like become afraid. Like that's <laughs> no, no. The defense went out there and was worse than the offense it was facing, which has been the case this entire game. Which is why right. going for it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, this game is already at the over under. It was fifty one and a half. We got yeah. fifty one points. I just realized I had written it off in the first half, but I took the Niners minus seven, and <laughs> that's live. <laughs> that field goal, but I mean, if they uh, if they were to get the ball back and score a touchdown, I mean, they could win by ten. Yep. The turnaround in this game has been way more than just bad luck on defense plus Reynolds drops in key spots. Nope, it hasn't. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's been the 49ers offense waking up as well. But I don't I mean, like that is that is exactly how this game is turning. Yeah, out. I mean, I guess the Gibbs fumble isn't listed there, but it really is just those things. It's a few it's things plays. Plus, the, plus uh the 49ers executing a little bit better. A know. little bit better, but yeah, not like way better. After that Ayuk pass, they got down right after that to they lost two yards. Incomplete pass on second down that I was asking about the chat about the slant. Oh my god! Another, oh, he caught it. Oh, he, another oh drop. I thought god, that was a pit. Don't flex and point. <laughs> Apparently, Marshall was, Marshall was agreeing with. By the way, I thought I thought he was disagreeing. Gotcha. But they they, guess, they got into a third down before the I U T D was going to be my point, and then they got a twenty four yard field. And they got a scramble from Purdy for 21 yards and ended up scoring on, on second down there. But, I mean, even, like, the offensive execution element of it is, like, a little dubious. It's not, like, you know, most of that was the, the play off the face mask. Holy yeah, and, and they, punched the, they punched those two. Uh, they scored the TDs. Yeah. 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 So they, they did what they needed to do with the opportunities for the most part. For sure. So uh, Monty uh, has now cleared. So some of the – let me pull these up for – we need Gibbs <coughs> or a St. Brown TD to complete those. Something's going to happen. Saying, like, oh, I, cause something's about to happen. We're behind. I'm behind and I'm oh, excited. God. Oh, oh, no. Flea flicker. Oh, Reynolds. Oh, that's J-Mo. No, it's J-Mo. Oh, jeez. Oh, I don't know Doing if I was Reynolds' there. impression. Yeah, he kind of got grabbed on his back shoulder, didn't he? I don't know if that's a terrible drop there. It's a tough play, right? I don't know if we got three Gibbs rushing yards in the cards here. No. 
Yeah, there's a guy who doesn't have the hand-eye coordination. <laughs> That's what I was talking about earlier. It's got it's a lot of traits that make him an NFL football player, but there are – I mean, I, this is going to sound weird, but there are like high school wide receivers that will never play college football that have better – catching ability like hand-eye coordination than some nfl wide receivers that's my take of course because they can't they don't have the ability to generate separation and they don't yeah they can have they're not like great but they 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 know how to catch a football like a football is a a weirdly shaped thing well it's like the guy who just won the shooting contest you guys are talking about i mean that guy can do one thing better (laughs) than actual you know nba guys fair point yeah um by the way, I know we're not, you know, it's one year and we, uh, we're we still leaving the light on for JSN and everything, but uh, transferring because you couldn't play over JSN looks worse now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys not agree? Well, it, wasn't just, it, it wasn't just JSN. It was Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, too, who've both been. Well, sure. yeah, but if you, I mean. And I'm certainly you, not anywhere close seriously. to. We need to leave a light on for JSN. I'm not even like, I'm not, I'm not the the light. All the lights in my JSN house are on. I'm not leaving oh, one. Oh, not, not all of mine are on. Where do you guys think he goes? That's an interesting one. Fifth round. I think I'm out if he's in the fifth round. That I don't think where he goes is that person. much different than where he went last year. I think yeah, a little higher. I think he's going to be the classic one. He's going to be, in a lot of ways, like a Najee Harris, where Ooh, Taco Bell commercial strong people on both us. sides, and you're going to have two to three JSN bowls in every draft uh-huh. that will just not let him go cheap. Is kind of what I how I could see it playing out. Okay. Well. Yeah, I think I'll be out. Not that he can't do it, but it's like, I think one of the things I've been thinking about is like those second year guys are actually, they come with a lot of risk because if they don't pan out, there's no, like rookie busts will sometimes get used at the end of the season because teams are seeing what they have, but they already know what they have on second year guys. So you don't get that little extra juice, even on the guys who are bad. I don't so it's a little bit. I don't think that's a concern for JSN, though. It's still just like that the offense is the exact same as it was last year. They don't know what they had with JSN. They didn't use him. Appropriately. Yeah, but they're going to use him more. <laughs> like in the on early off- season. I mean, that's the that's the question for me about whether to take him in the fifth round. Is Tyler Lockett on the roster or not? Because he has a huge. Oh like, well, yeah. I mean, that's theoretically that's could not be on the roster. That's obviously very big. He's what I'm saying them. about about them seeing what they have is that they're going to be seeing what they have like all season. Like it's not that he's going yeah. to get featured in late in the season like he was this year. Yeah, no, and and Donovan says here I was just about to make this point. We have a whole new coaching staff and so it it is tricky. Which could help. It could help, it could also hurt. It's not the team that brought yeah. him in. They might not have the right vision for him and he didn't have a great he didn't put a lot of great stuff on tape last year. He might get buried in some ways like if the, if yeah. the new coaching staff just doesn't really see the vision for him and and that's that's kind of what my point is too is like the the floor on these guys so it's more of a best ball specific point that i'm making because in season long i don't think you want to be as concerned about the floor because if you got to cut you know a six round pick it's not the end of the world but in best ball oh my I mean, god they're going for it on fourth down field range for it. Game. wow they could tie wow. in the fourth quarter it'd be a 47 yarder and they're going for it this is going to be – I hope they get this so I don't have to hear all the shit about it. Well, they didn't. Oh, no. Damn it. That sucks. This is going to be – I will – I mean, what was it? A 56-yarder? No, 40 that one. That one I feel more like maybe you just take the points because you're down three. Oh, for, yeah. Uh, yeah, 46-yarder. That's a really makeable kick. And you don't have a play. <sighs> yeah, that's right. <what I'm clears throat> so Seth Walder, a lot of the bots get 
criticized for being really pro go for it. And I know Seth Walders at ESPN is pretty pro go for it. He tweeted it last time and it was 0.2% difference. It was like a toss up. And then he just yeah. tweeted, this is right on the edge for us at fourth and three. So again, a toss up. Like these were not decisions that even the models that tend to lean um to tend to lean towards going for it were like you gotta relative go to, relative to, to what people it. think they yeah. I would sure. I would say like the models are probably closer to truth than our conventional wisdom. Yeah, I would agree with that too. But the models were saying it's a toss up. So yeah. everyone's gonna say what the hell was he doing, but the models are probably right. It probably was a toss up, but at a certain point, it's like I don't know. It's tricky. I think I would have picked it, that one. If he gets that one, everyone is like, "Dude, he stuck to his guns." He got. He, he, everyone is criticizing him after the last one, and he went for it, and they got it this time. And like, yeah. what kind of balls does he have? Yeah. The tweet I just saw here too. Uh, Badgley seventy-seven percent. Between forty to forty-nine yards out, um, so you can't also just bank it. Oh, right. for sure, that's not that yeah. good at all, and that's no. kicking in a dome for half of his right. games. He's outdoors here. Yeah, seventy-two yeah. percent. That's I would go for it. I thought I thought it was more like an eighty to eighty-five percent in my head. That's 40 to 49, and it was like a 47. I mean, it might have been like so like 70%. <laughs> Do you guys see this comment from Paul? GSM will go wherever <laughs> the only ranks him. That's not true. Uh, because Someone earlier last said year, Leody tried to get tried to fud DJ Moore deep, deep out of anyone drafting him, and it's the exact same concept. It's like if the market That's says fair. a few of us want DJ Moore in the in the fourth round, DJ Moore is going to the fucking fourth round, no matter where he's ranked. That's By great. the way, I think he's a two three turn guy for sure. Oh, oh yeah, Fields isn't going to be there. I yeah, was thinking they're drafting Fields. Caleb, right? So yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah. so. I'm, fun. I'm in on that with 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 Moore. I want to be back in on Moore with a different quarterback. Yeah, he looked so good this year. It was the validation yeah, of the he's good thesis in every way that you would want it validated. Mm -hmm. He's now been good in just so many different contexts. Yeah. Yep. His last year in Carolina was a little sketchy, and that was a little part of the reason I didn't want to be in on him was like, well, maybe he's just never been as good as I always thought he was, and then he was phenomenal this year. But he still – I mean, he ended up – I just pulled this up as we are talking about He ended up the wide receiver six in PPR, which is kind of wild. But uh, in points per game, it was wide receiver nine. Wow. And, again, that's with a massive game. He ended up having some good games down the stretch, which was a big part of it. But early in the year, like he only had one other 20 plus than the 50 pointer against Washington. He absolutely feasted on Washington. He's a, yeah. I could see him moving up maybe to the one two turn by the end of the summer once we get comfortable with being excited about the Bears offense. What do you guys think about that? Maybe more like maybe more like pick 14, 15, but that's an interesting question. I mean, I don't yeah. I think that's a I think that's hot, but maybe because there's not a lot of running backs up there is kind of the idea, right? This game's that's right. Gosh. That's right. It's like um I mean like him versus Saquon or him versus uh I mean, I don't think Saquon should be anywhere near that range, but. Kyron? I would take DJ Moore over Kyron right now. I think I would, I think I would too. The other thing about them adding another running back, they went into this year and, like, look, they loved Kyron, but they thought they were going to get something out of Cam Akers too. Like, part of Kyron's role was the fact that Cam Akers was somebody they needed to ship out of town. Like, they didn't want to be in that position. Oh my god, third rushing TD. That's game. I can't I believe know, I that's mid election. But don't wow. yeah. Oh wow, you're right. 
man, this is a pretty sick run out for our core. <laughs> I mean, Brock Purdy will he he's uh 11 yards passing yards out. Ayuk is 10 receiving yards. Goff is going to get there on pass attempts. Oh, bummer. He, there was just so much running that drive. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And again, I feel like we can go back to why – going for it makes sense because Dan Campbell knows his defense can't stop shit. Right. He's going to get, man, the media stuff on this is going to be bad. He's going to get crucified for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the exciting stuff about it, the uh, aggressiveness, all of that stuff is going to turn into stubborn and, you know. I will say, like, just this Brock – I mean, this Brock game is so polarizing. You know, I feel like in the second half it really has just been him not making mistakes and scrambling. But I can already feel the narrative train being like, there's no way Brock Purdy beats Patrick Mahomes. Like, I think that's where we're headed from a narrative standpoint. I think I'm already there. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I think I agree. That's where we're headed. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I think, I'm back I think to six on, gonna, on Pat's you're gonna, point. <laughs> you're going to get Chiefs money line at plus money. Like I think Niners will open up as as very slight faves. It's going to be close. Um, that that would have yeah. yeah. definitely been – they would have definitely opened up as faves – prior to this game. I think it's going to be close. The Chiefs looked good in beating Baltimore, and the Niners looked bad again. I, th- I think they open up as, like, minus one or something. I think it's going to be like that. I really yeah. do. I think you're right that it'll be Niners, but it might be minus 1.5 or something. And I bet you it gets bet across. I mean, I think KC winds up favored. I think it closes KC minus two. I bet you're right. I think you're hundred percent right because the public is going to be so jazzed up to bet Mahomes as an underdog. Like if mm-hmm. the public gets Mahomes as an underdog, it. Yep. Yeah, I could see that right. swinging for sure. Opens minus one, closes minus closes minus two the other way. Man, I would love like a an overtime suck out to this game to help some pickums hit. <laughs> I love this tweet from uh, Stats of War who said, Dan Campbell should have kicked it and made the 49ers march the entire length of the field to score, which is a great point. If they kick it that second time and tie the game, it changes nothing. The Niners just drove down and scored a touchdown on you. I mean, now you'd be down seven. You'd still be in shouting distance at this point. Right. But you can't stop them. <laughs> That's the problem, right? The problem. Like, yeah. They gotta go quick though. They have three timeouts. This isn't like it's 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 more over. It feels more over than it actually is. But it's they're saving their timeouts, but not moving fast. You can't throw over the middle on second and ten for four yards. You gotta hurry up. You gotta hurry up. You have to go score. Can't call a whole play. You gotta have a play call. What are we doing, Jared? Trying to design the whole freaking offense at the line. Now this is your last play before the two minute warning. I mean, it's not again not completely over if they can score before like a minute left. God. I'm going to advance a headless horseman, uh, headless you? quarterback team to the gauntlet finals. Oh, nice. What is it? <laughs> so it had Allen, but it had CMC, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Sam Laporta, Jamison Williams, and Jawan Jennings on it. So it'll have, I mean, it's it's dead. CMC. And <laughs> I need I needed Detroit to have it be a fun headless team I, with four Detroit players. I have 71.94 points, and the guy behind me who has, like, every lion you can think of 
has 70.76. So he's like 1.2 points behind me. <sighs> yeah. That's and then point. I have a big mitten where I'm up by uh, about eight points, just under eight points. Easy and he's... I are going to get bounced in that big mitten because we're, uh, I think, like three and a half Kittle points short right now, which just fucking stings because it's a six yeah. person final. And we had the team blocked. He had Mahomes, CMC, Kelsey, and we had Mahomes, CMC, Rice, along with uh, Kittle. Kittle and two Ravens. Oh. And we couldn't get it done. Oh. Gus Edwards, blah. Odell Beckham, blah. Kittle, blah. Rashi Rice, blah. Ugh. Kelsey beats all four of those guys. He went nuke, man. That's rough. Where do you guys think Kelsey yeah. goes? That's a fascinating one, man. I think he kind of should go on the two three turn. And I feel like the, two weeks ago it was like, oh, he's going to go with it, like, you know, pick. Four Are you talking three. FFPC, tight end premium, or no? I'm talking best ball, underdog. I was thinking uh, underdog. I was thinking more like three four turn. And That's I was gonna was, say I think but... he should go where like Mark Andrews was going last year, like mid third. Which is mid more mid third. Yeah. yeah, I think that's where he probably settles. That's that's probably right. I will think I mean the one thing I've noticed, it seems like the market, just like I've seen a few early tweets of like tight end ranks for next year, and it seems like people are very excited about Laporta, but kind of discrediting Trey McBride in my mind. Like I feel like Trey McBride should be pretty much right there with those guys. And I've been seeing like a decent gap between where McBride is going and yeah, I, Laporta I had, and Kelsey. A few weeks ago, we were talking about who was going to be the tight end one next year. And I'm pretty sure it was on ship chasing. I, I thought McBride should be the number like tight end one. I have, I, I have McBride, McBride at 54, um, which is a little bit behind Andrews Laporta. I had him right behind Kittle. So I mean, the I'm only thing that, keeping him the there is like what people are worried about. There you go. Get up to the ball. Wow, you might Josh have a Reynolds game. made a catch. That was a big play. You had to go get 20 yards right there. Those little four-yard passes aren't doing it, but you got to go quick still. Uh, okay, just, there you go. Get out of bounds. Just, well, there you go. Bounce. I just got bounced from a gauntlet. God damn it. Uh oh. Oh, with Reynolds? Because of the golf. He had golf, so that was enough uh, golf. Oh well, dude. They were up twenty four seven at half. This sucks. <laughs> they have not scored any points in the second half. But if they can get in, oh yeah, I have Niners minus seven. I guess I don't want that. <laughs> I'm definitely at the point in the day where I just have. There's just. It's so it's much like shit going on. Thing to all yeah. Of. Second app pickums, full pickums, pickums from earlier in the week, dailies, DFS, showdown, <laughs> playoff best ball. It's just like the money line bet you bet. Get in. Go, Laporta. Get, get in. in. It wasn't Laporta. It's not Laporta. That's fucking come on. Because Laporta would have got in. I don't know what he's doing. You're wide he open. Not. He's just Brock Wright or whatever come his on, name Brock. is. But he took like seven steps after he caught it towards the. They're saying Anthony Ferkser. Oh my god, oh, that was Anthony Ferkser. Ferkser? Wow, wow Ferk Daddy. I had Back no idea Ferk Daddy was on this team. He needs to turn up field though. That was crazy. He had zero juice. Oh no! What are you doing? You're wasting like a lot of time. Wasn't a Monra open there or not? Someone was open in the back of the end zone on the first read. It felt like the little curl, yeah, a little banana out.
They ran it. Oh I God. knew they were going to do this. Oh you can't God. do that. How can you? Holy shit. And then did they call a timeout? That's so bad. Oh, my God. Now I want him to not score and just give me my cover. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That was so, so bad. What was that, man? Oh, man, that was bad. And now they're going for it because they're they're down here. You gotta. I can't believe they called a run play there. And then they scored. Oh, shit, Davis said, "What a catch!" So now I just lose my fucking bet on top of it. That's just a kick to the nuts because it's not even competitive now. You gotta, you gotta get an onside kick at this point, because I just, there's, the timeout saves you forty seconds when your opponent has the ball. There's no way it costs you forty seconds, even if you call a run play to line up and run the play on fourth down. Get if you're gonna call a run play on third down, have your fucking fourth down play called in the huddle. Run the ball, line up, waste eight seconds or whatever. But you have your fucking play called, and you and you call two plays. That's that's now you can't if you don't recover the onside's kick you can't win. That timeout is so massive. It's 40 seconds. There's 56 left. It's the fucking it's the game. I can't believe they used that timeout. Oh man. He played for the fucking cover. <laughs> he played for the cover. Oh, Dan. Because now, now Dan's giving him too much ammo. <laughs> oh, I've been muted forever. I saw in the chat that I was muted. Um, I'm going to have a big bell. I have a big man. I didn't even I drink. I don't have to ring the bell. I can drive to the bell. Sorry, Pat. Go yeah. ahead. No, I just I have a big mitten that's now advancing by like one point one point. So I desperately need the the Forty ers to just get this onside kick. Nice. It in the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, you know, it was advancing like comfortably for um, a while, and then the Jamison Williams touchdown made it made it a little bit of sweat. Now, oh, that was at least an interesting onside kick. I I uh, I went live. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. It's over. Okay. All right. Whew. I got a big mitt. I got a big mitt in. Nice. Congrats. That's awesome. Thanks. It's pretty live. It's got uh oh <laughs> that was sure. bouncing around. I it seemed like a good onside kick as far as giving yeah. himself a chance. For sure. Niners Chiefs, oh. huh? They they touched the ball too early. Oh uh, that would have actually <clears throat> that would have been challenging. Let that bounce. Organically, you might get a funky one there off of Ayuk, maybe. That's right. I think he should have let that go. They called a flag. They did call. They did the flag. Oh man. Yeah, because the last 
the last Chiefs Niners Super Bowl, that was right before. Oh, Kobe. you're right. He does not need to. I mean, make I or whoever it wasn't I you whoever's going for that, make him make a play on it, dude. Yeah, because you are right in position for the rebound catch off of an Ayuk muff. Oh, sweet. Yo, the uh, Mr. Mister won the pullback drive five. Nice. Congrats, uh, with, with the Jamo catch. Congrats. There you go. That's awesome. Nice work. Wow. So as far as our programming schedule, I think we'll probably take next week off, right, guys? Or yeah, I think this was sort of this week's show, right? Yeah. And then, I mean, we had a fun week this past week. I'm down to take like a month off. <laughs> yeah, and then the next week I'm flying out to Underdog Thursday afternoon. Um, we could we could huddle back up after the Super Bowl. Talk about thoughts after the Super Bowl, though. Maybe. I like that. Yeah. One thing that's coming, I'll say before we get off today, is been making some updates to Omni Fantasy. We always have oh, to nice. talk about that a little bit oh, this nice. time of year. So I know that some of the ship chasers enjoy that. Um, Those are always fun. Adding a on the clock email so that <laughs> we don't have to like ping people when they're on the clock. They'll actually get an email and changing it so that you'll get. You'll log in with your email instead of Twitter because I got that request a million times because, like, Twitter's dying. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It's nice. Omni season. Yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, and, yeah, I know we uh, we obviously didn't uh, talk about it uh, tonight at all unless you guys talked about it at the top when I wasn't here. But uh, appreciate everyone, uh, specifically all you guys that are in the Discord and stuff. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a long – in draining uh week for all of us uh but yeah happy to have you guys as part of uh the community and yeah i think we're still kind of just like decompressing from what uh was a yeah, pretty right. insane week it's been exactly what you said a very taxing week a lot of uh I, this isn't a complaint i told you i haven't updated you guys on this but i told you guys that uh the wife and I were going to go to a comedy show yesterday, Nate Bargazzi. And then my daughter woke up in the middle of the night, my youngest, and she had to, my wife had to take her into the walk in. She did have strep. We had to skip that. Like, that was the thing I was looking forward to all week. Like, we're going to go to this comedy show on Saturday. It's been a long week. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long week for the whole industry, I think. It's, uh, yeah, for it sure. It was now. nice to just watch a game. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to have, I mean, this, Yesterday was kind of like my first Saturday where I wasn't just like drafting and, you know, thinking about DFS teams like for a good chunk of the day. And even that was refreshing. I'm very much looking forward to uh, I know everyone's chomping at the bit to draft uh, again, but I'm like, I'm ready for a little break here. Um, sure. yeah. But if you guys do want to uh, join us in the discord, you always can. Uh, you become YouTube members, you sync your YouTube and discord account, and that will unlock that. Uh, also, shout out to Nick tonight in the hopper, helping us produce, getting the timestamps. Uh, we'll get some clips, all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, probably no show for until the following Thursday after the Super Bowl would be my guess. Uh, anything else uh, from you guys, Gretch? We got the Omni. Pat, sounds like you're in the lab on your ranks. I'm in the lab. Yeah, going to get a dynasty update and working on kind of the, the early best ball rankings as well and uh, about to start my all my rookie stuff. So I also, I'll tease, um, I wanted to get this out last week, but with, with all everything going on, um, we delayed it. But Sacrilegious has an article um, on a new metric that, uh, that he's debuting for just kind of a better way to understand like um, who is contributing uh, to, to best ball rosters. Um, so nice. that, that I'm looking, we'll, we'll have that out early next week. Yeah, that'll Early be this week, I guess. That'll be awesome. Uh, to do what else was I gonna say? I forget. Um, all right, we're gonna power it down. Last ship cast of the year. I I think I speak for all three of us when I say we had a blast doing this show. Ooh. I know early on there was uh, some people who were bummed that we weren't doing the waiver wire show, but 
Uh, again, we, we had a blast doing this. This fit the vibe of the show. It fit how we like to spend uh, our week doing ship chasing content. Total blast. Hopefully you guys feel similarly because uh, I would very much like to run it back again next year because um, getting to sweat out these games with you guys, getting the pick going. Um, even when they were miserable Thursday night games, I still feel like we found things to make it fun. So thank you to everyone who followed along, watched with us uh, during the year. A great season here at Ship Chasing, and we will be turning the page to 2024 here soon enough. So for Gretch, for Pat, I'm Pete. We will see you guys next time on Ship Chasing.